One important message for all of us is that the love of dunya divides the lovers and the love of Rasulullah unites the lovers. It's all about Salam. It begins with Salam. It ends with Salam. It is narrated by the one whose name is Salam. And it is the hadith of the one upon whom we send Salat and Salam. I came to the gathering of a Sufa foundation and from that I learned that a believer must inform other believers if they have love for them and there's a reward for this. This is why I'm telling you why. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered me, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Whenever you are happy, do you make a phone call to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Lekin maay to maay hi hoti hai, maa to apne beite ko dua deti hai. Ik maa hai adan, nurani badan, nichi nazare, sab ki khabare, wo dikha ke pavan, wo suna ke sukhan, mara phunk gaya, sab tan man dhan. انہی کی بو مایائے سمن ہے انہی کا جلوہ چمن چمن ہے انہی کی رنگت گلاب میں ہے یاسی کی چمک ہے دانتن میں تاہا کا کرشمہ آنکھن میں والفجر کا جلوہ گالن میں جو اتنا سونا ہو اتنا خوبصورت ہو وہ جھوٹا نہیں ہو سکتا زمین و زمان تمہارے لیے مکین و مکہ تمہارے لیے چنین و چنا تمہارے لیے یہ سبا سنک وہ کلی چٹک یہ زبان چہک لب جو جلک یہ مہک جلک یہ چمک دھمک سب اسی کے دم کی بہار ہے مینگلور کی حسیناؤں کے چہرے بھی دیکھے یہاں کی عورتوں کو دیکھے بالی ووڈ کی موویز کو دیکھ کر اپنی آنکھوں کی پیاس کو تو بجھا رہا ہے غم دو جہاں سے چھڑا دیا غم مصطفیٰ تیرا شکریہ مجھے جینا مرنا سکھا دیا موینگ آن اٹس ٹائم ٹو ویلکم شیخ ساکر بن اقبال شام افضا اللہ تو سٹار اسپیچ سو آئی ڈون تنگ سو آئی ایم آئی نیڈ ٹو ڈو دس You all should help me, so it's up to you all. Welcome, Sheikh, for this wonderful event. Nare Takbir! Nare Risalat! Ulamahe Ahla Sunnah! Nare Takbir! Zindabad! Zindabad! Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام عليك يا صفة الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم ويتعمون التعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيم وأصيرا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم وقد صدقت أنت يا سيدي يا سيدي يا سيدي يا مكي يا مدني يا عربي يا قرشي يا هاشمي ويا سيدنا يا سيدنا يا سيدنا يا حبيبنا يا طبيبنا يا حبيب المصطفى المجتبى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم سبحان الله First and foremost I would like to express my gratitude to all the organizers of this beautiful event the members of Fasufa Foundation the leaders of Fasufa Foundation and all these beautiful ulama, the dignitaries who have blessed us with their presence tonight. May Allah Jalla wa ala accept all your efforts and my gratefulness is imparted. My gratefulness is imparted to all the brothers for their love, for their mahabba and for inviting me and blessing me with this beautiful opportunity of talking about the best of creation, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. May Allah jalla wa ala accept all your efforts. And by Allah, the way uh, the brother was introducing me, I do not deserve the kind of praise and this, the welcome and all these slogans. Um, it's, there was a lot of exaggeration, a lot of exaggeration in, in what was said. I'm a humble servant of deen and I'm not even a Khadim or Talib al Ilam or Tuwailib. You know, not even a Talib al Ilam. I don't even deserve to be called a Talib al Ilm. This is your Mahabba and your Husnuzan. And make dua that may Allah make me according to your Husnuzan, what you think about me. May Allah Jalla wa ala bless us all with the true love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah make us all the true Ushak, the true lovers of the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The brothers have told me to deliver a talk about the importance of loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam being a mercy for all humanity and every creation of Allah jalla wa ala. 
As we know that today, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is being misunderstood by many people. And the teachings of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today are being stigmatized with terrorism, with hate, alayazu billah. Whereas in reality, we all know that undoubtedly the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is a prophet of love, is a prophet of mercy, a prophet of compassion, harmony and clemency. Muslims and non-Muslims, even Orientalists who have studied the sciences of Islam and who have studied the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, many of those who studied the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, to criticize the Prophet wasallam, had to admit that the Prophet wasallam, is a prophet of love and mercy. One example of that is the famous historian, a Christian historian, Karen Armstrong, who has written many works. We don't accept everything that she says. She's a Christian historian. After studying the Prophet وسلم, in her famous work, Prophet Muhammad, a prophet of our time. She calls him the prophet of our time, meaning the Prophet Muhammad وسلم's teachings are not limited to his own time when he was physically alive. We all believe that the Prophet wasallam undoubtedly is alive today. His teachings are alive and he himself is alive. That's why we always say the famous uh, Ash'ar of the great Mujaddid Imam Ahmad Riza Rahimahullah Tu zinda hai wallah, tu zinda hai wallah Mere chashmi alam se chup jane wale We believe that the Prophet wasallam is alive. His teachings are alive. But she says that the teachings of the Prophet wasallam are relevant to our time. And after studying the Prophet Sallallahu she said that it's a shame that today the man who came to this world to unite people, to bring people together, is being called a prophet of hate, Alayya She said he came to a community that had so much hate that they fought wars with each other on the basis of a horse race. There was a war that took place only on the basis of a horse race and this war, this hate, this murder and killing continuously took place for 40 years. This is the community that the Prophet ﷺ came to. And what did he do? Rasulullah ﷺ came to that community and made them reconcile. Made that community who was in war with each other for 40 years which just started because of a horse race. And the Prophet ﷺ made them all fall in love with each other. This is the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And before I talk about the importance of loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the Quranic teachings regarding the true message of Al-Islam, it's important for all of, all of us to understand that this is the uniqueness of the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the unique feature of the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that love of dunya, love of the world, Love of anything other than the Prophet ﷺ divides the lovers. If you're in love with something, you're in love with a car, you're in love with a property, a house, you're in love with a phone, camera, anything materialistic, or even you're in love with a person. Whenever you love someone, the love of everyone other than the Prophet ﷺ divides the lovers meaning say that you're in love with a car you want to buy the car and there are 10 other people they're all in love with the same car they all want to buy the same car now all of these people are in love with the same car but they will hate each other they will be distant from each other I'll give you another example you're in love with a girl, you want to marry her, yes? You want to get married to her and there's, there are 10 other people, they want to get married to the same person. Would you be in love with those 10 people? Those 10 lovers of the same person will love the same person, but they will hate each other. They will not bear the present presence of the next person. And the same with the property, with anything else in dunya. The love of dunya 
divides the lovers. Why have I come here today? Why is it that these brothers of Asufa Foundation have been inviting me for a year, contacting the brothers, inviting me, trying their best to bring me here, and even this journey was very difficult, but they somehow managed to take out that time and cancel some other events for me to come. So I'm blessed with your ziyarah, so I can see all of these great lovers of the Prophet and to see that the love of Ahlul Sunnah is not limited to the community of Ahnaf. We are seeing so many beautiful shawafi, ulama of the Shafi school. They're all lovers of the Prophet and the same is with the Malikiyah and the Hanabila, provided that we all follow the same Aqeedah. So Alhamdulillah today, I have come here to see you. Why did you invite me? You invited me to talk about the love of Rasulullah And that is my desire. That is what I want. I want each and every one of you to fall in love with Rasulullah Why? Because I love the Prophet I love Rasulullah Now my love for the beloved demands from me that I make each and every one of you fall in love with Rasulullah do you see this? Look at my desire. Love of dunya divides the lovers. If you're in love with dunya, all lovers of the same thing will hate each other. But the love of the Prophet ﷺ unites all lovers. I am in love with Rasulullah I want each and every one of you to fall in love with Rasulullah It's the love of dunya that divides the lovers. But it is the love of Rasulullah that unites the lovers. Now if someone claims to love Rasulullah but he doesn't love all the lovers of Rasulullah He claims, for instance, we have some Shafi ulama. We have a brother with green imama, perhaps he's a Hanafi, yes? Now, he's a Hanafi, then they're Shafi ulama. These are Shafi ulama, Hanafi ulama. But what are they? They're all lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes? They follow the same creed. Their fundamental cardinal doctrine is the same, yes? Their aqidah is the same. Their belief is the same. Everything which is from ma'loom min ad-deen bi darura from Zuruliyate Islam and from Zuruliyate Ahl Sunnah, from the Mazhab of Ahl Sunnah, they are the same. They are all lovers of the Prophet. Yes? But if the Hanafi lover of the Prophet doesn't love the Shafi lover of Rasulullah and then both claim, and the Shafi doesn't love the Hanafi, and they both claim that we both love Rasulullah, then we know that they are not in love with Rasulullah. Yes? Why? Because the love of the Prophet ﷺ demands that you fall in love with the lovers of Rasulullah ﷺ. And this is a general principle. This is not just between the different schools. This is between even Hanafis, even Shafis amongst themselves. If a Nath Khan, someone, a Munshid, who recites the Nath of the Prophet ﷺ, if he cannot tolerate the presence of another Nath Khan, yes? A Nath Khan doesn't like another Nath Khan. But both Nath Khans, both Munshidun say we love the Prophet ﷺ. Or a scholar, Imam of a masjid, cannot bear the presence of another Imam. There is jealousy, envy, hatred between them. And they both claim that we both love the Prophet ﷺ. What will we say? We will say it's the love of dunya that divides the lovers. But it's the love of Rasulullah that unites the lovers. And if you are claiming to love the Prophet but you hate each other, that means you're in it for a different reason. There is some dunya. If it was sincerely deen, then deen would make you love each other. If you claim to love Rasulullah but you hate each other, that means you're in it for dunya. Either for name, or for fame, or for money for other things. But if you're truly in love with Rasulullah it's necessary that we love all the lovers of Rasulullah So one important message for all of us is that the love of dunya divides the lovers. And the love of Rasulullah unites the lovers. And if we see that there is disunity, that means there is insincerity. That means there is no real love. So the Prophet love 
it's not only limited for those who love the Prophet ﷺ. That's another beauty of the Prophet ﷺ. He makes you fall in love with every creation of Allah. Every creation of Allah. Now this, the Quranic verse that I have recited in the very beginning, in this Allah praises the believers. Now how does Allah praise the believers? Allah mentions in the Quran a unique characteristic of the believers. When the first wahi was revealed upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, after Iqra, for 13 years, the hukum of salah was not given. 13 years after Iqra, the hukum of salah was given. About 15 years after that, the hukum of fasting was given. About 20 years after Iqra, the hukum the order of Hajj came, was revealed upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, other than Iman and refraining from shirk, what was the deen of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the first 13 years? What was the Islam? What was Islam for them? What did Islam mean for those people? Those people who were living in Makkah al Mukarramah? For such a long time, when the hukum of salah didn't come, the hukum of the prayer wasn't revealed, the hukum of hajj wasn't revealed, the hukum of fasting wasn't revealed. The question is, what was Islam for these people? What did they do? Other than refraining from shirk and believing in Allah and believing in the Prophet ﷺ, what was the ibadah? What was the act of worship? How did they worship Allah? They were believers, they were Muslims. What were the amal? What were the actions? Allah mentions this in the Quran and praises their deen. What is it that these people did? And remember, what was the society, the community, who were they living with? Were they all Muslims? They were in a community of non-Muslims. Muslims residing with non-Muslims. They were idol worshippers. They were people who disbelieved in the existence of Allah. There were people who worshipped idols. So Muslims were residing with non-Muslims and Muslims at that time were in a minority. They were a minority. So what was the act of worship? How did they worship Allah? What did they do? Allah Jalla praises those believers and Allah says, وَيُتْعِمُونَ التَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ What did they do? When they were not praying the fourth prayer, fourth salah, no other hukum was given to them. What was Islam to them? Islam to them was feeding people. And Allah mentions this in the Quran. How did they act upon the hakam of Islam? They used to feed people. And Allah said, even though they desired the food, not that they were wealthy people, not that they were very rich people, people who had the food, they wanted the food. But they sacrificed their own food and they gave it to who? Miskinan. They gave it to who? Yatiman. They gave it to orphans. They gave it to poor people. And they gave it to the prisoners. So they sacrificed their food. They did not eat it themselves, but they would give it to other people, to the poor people of the community. And those poor people, who were they? Were they all Muslims? No. They were Muslims and non-Muslims. Feeding people was the act of worship for the believers living in the society of Makkah al Mukarramah. And this is something that is explained by the Prophet ﷺ and something that is relevant to all of us who are living in this society when we are living with Muslims and non-Muslims to live in a society when you are residing with other communities. What is the teaching of Rasulullah ﷺ for Muslims regarding cohesion and integration, citizenship, living in these kind of societies. This is directly taken from the Quran and from the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam that Allah Jalla praises that community, that the act of worship, those believers, is that they sacrifice their own food and they feed other people. And this is exactly what the Muslims do in the, in, in, in the Indian subcontinent and all the Muslims who spread all over the world that when you go to the shrines of the awliya, what do they do? They feed you. 
A lot of people say that why feeding people? Islam is all about the prayer. Islam is all about acts of worship. Islam is all about jihad. Islam is all about fighting in the path of Allah. Islam is all about hajj, recitation of the Quran. I say that undoubtedly these are part of Islam. This is something which is within Islam. But Allah praises these people that the first practice of the believers which started in the society of Muslims and non-Muslims living together, Allah says that they used to feed people. Allah praises them. And what do they say? They said that we feed you. Why do we feed you? We feed you for the sake of Allah. We serve humanity. This is the mission. This is the, the, the manhaj and the methodology of the great awliya Allah. This is how spread Islam spread all over the world. It wasn't by force. It wasn't by the sword. It was by the love and service of hum humanity. Service of the creation of Allah Jalla And this was the methodology of people like the great awliya Allah, like Khaja Gharib Nawaz, Rahimahullah, and Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahimahullah. And this has continued from their time till our time. That wherever we live today, people who have any contact with the Tariqa Qadriya, Naqshbandiya, Chishtiya, Sorwardiya, Shazaliya, Rifaiya, OAC, and all of these people who belong to Turk, you will see that this is the uniqueness of the believers which has been passed on from the time of the Prophet sallallahu the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, Atba'u Tabi'een, Salfu Salihin, Awliya, all of them, they used to feed people without distinguishing and differentiating between a believer and an unbeliever. So that is the first message of Islam that which we learn directly from the Quran and a lot of people have misunderstood the teachings of Islam. The first question that people should ask is the question that was asked by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama. The beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama once said to the Sahaba, O oh Sahaba, what is the awthaq iman? What is the, the strongest iman? What is the heaviest iman? The strongest belief? The Sahaba said, Salah, prayer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La. What is the strongest of Islam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to the Sahaba. Sahaba said, Salah, it's the prayer. Like a lot of people today. As soon as you meet them, the first thing they will say, if you don't pray, you will be in hellfire for 28 million, 800,000 years. Islam is all about this. If you pray, this is what you will get. If you don't pray, you will be in hellfire. Was this the manhaj of the Prophet ﷺ? Undoubtedly, Rasulullah ﷺ is a nazir, but he's also a bashir. He gave basharat. The Prophet ﷺ taught you how to practically implement the teachings of Islam. But look at the method of Rasulullah ﷺ. The beloved of Allah ﷺ begins with what? And who do we take the teachings of Islam from? It is, we, we are not directly in contact with Allah. It is through the mediation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So what is Islam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to the Sahaba Ali Muridwan, what is the strongest Iman? What is the heaviest of Iman? What is the best of Islam? Sahaba said, Salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, La. Sahaba said, Som, fasting, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, La. The Sahaba said, Jihad, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That is the strongest of belief of Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, La. The Sahaba said, Hajj. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said no. Then the companion said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you inform us. The beloved sallallahu alayhi wa said, the strongest and the heaviest of Islam is to fall in love with each other for the sake of Allah. Loving each other. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, loving each other. Islam is all about love. If someone doesn't pray, or if you see a sister who doesn't wear hijab, people will start shouting at her, you are evil, you are bad. Someone misses a prayer, you are bad, you are evil, you will be in hellfire. If someone commits a sin, we start shouting at them. We insult them, we distance them from the loving message of Rasulullah Whereas look at the, the companions, the companion said this, is it Salah? Undoubtedly, salah is important. It's an obligation. Undoubtedly, zakat, saum, hajj, everything is important. But according to Rasulullah the most important thing in Islam, what is it? It is loving each other. It is to have love for each other. 
Once the companions said to Rasulullah Mal Islam Ya Rasulullah What is Islam Ya Rasulullah You know what Rasulullah said? The beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam defined Islam. He said, It'amu ta'am wa kalam. That is Islam. To sweetly talk to people, softly speaking to people, talking to people with love, that is Islam. Who said this? I'm not saying, saying this. I'm not making this up. You will say, Islam is about ibadat ahkam. No doubt in that. That's part of Islam. That's necessary. But look how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam introduced Islam. What is Islam, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Islam is sweetly talk to people and feed people. That's what Islam is. Once the companions said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mal iman. What is iman? Now look at this. Who is defining iman? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mal iman. What is iman? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as sabru wa samaha. Iman is to be patient. And iman is to forgive people. Forgiveness. From the first hadith, we learned that the strongest of Islam is love. And from this second hadith, what is Islam and what is Iman? Islam is feeding people. And to speak to people with love. And what is Iman? Iman according to Rasulullah is patience. To be patient and to forgive people. Tell me, if you were to feed people, would they love you or not? They will love you because you're feeding the hungry. If you speak to people with love, would they love you or not? What is the result of speaking to people with love? When you give love, they will fall in love with you. So according to Rasulullah Islam is about love. And the other point, what is Iman, Ya Rasulullah The beloved of Allah said, Iman is patience and forgiveness. If someone harms you and you are patient, they hit you, they torture you, they speak against you, they break your heart, but you are sabir, you are patient, you do sabr. Will they love you or not? They will say, I'm always speaking against this person, but he always reacts with love. He's a patient person. So being patient also results in love. And not only that you are patient, you're also forgiving. One is that you are patient, but you have pain in your heart and you hate the person. Not only that you are patient, you forgive the person who harms you. Would that person not fall in love with you? That person will fall in love with you. So this shows even the definition of Iman is also love. The definition of Islam is also love. And what is the strongest amal in Islam? The Prophet said even that is love. So Islam is all about love. It's all about mahabba. Then the companions asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Ayjul iman afdal. What is the best of iman? First they said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, What is the best of Islam? Ayjul islami afdal. You know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man salim al-muslimoon min lisanihi wa yadihi. Who is the best Muslim according to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, from whosever's hands and his tongue others are protected, the believers are protected. If you do not backbite others, if you do not torture others with your hands, with your tongue, then you are the best of Muslims. This is in Sahih Bukhari. And there's another hadith in Al-Mu'jamul Awsat Li-Tabarani. Which is narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. In that the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man salim an nas. This teaching here in Bukhari, this is just specific teachings for Muslims. But the teachings for non-Muslims, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Don't you think that you are the best Muslim if only Muslims are protected from you, from your harm, physical or with your tongue? No, it's not limited to Muslims. Rasulullah said, Man salim an nas, an nas. 
even if he's a Hindu, even if he's a Christian, even if he's a Yahudi, whoever he is, an atheist, one who believes in Allah, or if he doesn't believe in Allah, if a Muslim or a non-Muslim is protected from the harm that was to come from you, then you are the best of believers. What makes you the best of believers? This is why I say, people who say Islam is about jihad, Islam is about fighting the enemies, you must hate non-Muslims. This has nothing to do with Islam. Who has given this definition of Islam? Why is this definition being promoted by people? This has nothing to do with the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Who gave you Islam? It is Rasulullah ﷺ. That beloved of Allah ﷺ, who has introduced Islam to us, Islam came to us through Rasulullah ﷺ. He is saying that the best of the believers is the one from whom a Hindu feels protected. A Hindu knows, a Christian, a Yehudi, everyone knows that even if I am absent from my house, my house is protected. Why? Because my neighbor is a believer of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He trusts you. This is what Islam is all about. This is what Iman is all about. And then the companion said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ayyul Iman yafdal. Ayyul Iman. These are hadiths from Bukhari, Muslim, the Quran. I'm not making this up. This is from the Quran, I'm presenting references. This is why I say, never misunderstand Islam. If you want to learn Islam, learn it from the authentic sources of legislation. The origin of Islam, what is it? It is the Quran. It is the Sunnah of Rasulullah If any non-Muslims think that Islam promotes hate and terror, I say, who did you learn Islam from? Who has been teaching you the teachings of Islam? Go back to the original sources. And what are the original sources? It is the Quran and it is the Sunnah of Rasulullah I am mentioning the same verses of the Quran. I am giving references from the hadith of the Prophet Rasulullah was questioned, what is the best of Iman? Do you know what Rasulullah said? Did he say Salah? Did he say Hajj? Zakat? Did he say fasting? Jihad? Hating others? Hating those who do not pray? Hating those who do not act upon the ahkam of deen? Hating people? Promoting hatred? Say that stay away from so and so, hate so and so? Someone who doesn't act upon the ahkam of sharia? Stigmatizing them with evil people, haram, transgressors, farsik? Is that what Islam is about? What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ayyul Iman Afdal was the questions of, question of the Sahaba. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Husnul Akhlaq. That's what the best of Iman is, Husnul Akhlaq. To have good character, good Akhlaq. To talk to people with love is the best of Iman. And Husnul Akhlaq is not... A lot of people think Husnul Akhlaq is with people, with your family members, with your work colleagues, or other friends of yours. When they meet their teachers, they have Husnul Akhlaq. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of you are those who are the best with their women, At fam with your family, family members. You may meet your friends outside your house and you may meet them with a lot of love, with humility, with humbleness. But as soon as we go home, we start shouting at our wife, our sisters, our mothers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the best of you are those who are the best with the women of the house. Husnul akhlaq. The best of iman is husnul akhlaq. And that is also taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And look at the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated from Makkah al Mukarramah to Madinah al Munawwara, look at the first message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The very first message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people. According to this narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O people, afju salam. Now, uh, brother. Amir, in the beginning he was talking about positivity. He mentioned a brother, he introduced a brother that when you sit with him, you get these positive vibes. That's why he was trying to give the message about the positivity of the brother. This positivity, where does it come from? This positivity comes from Rasulullah 
the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was forced to leave from makkah al mukarramah he migrated from makkah al mukarramah and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to madinatul munawwara if you look at the first khutbah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in that first khutbah the first sermon that was delivered by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in madinatul munawwara you will not find a single statement of complaining against what the people of Makkah did to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was all positivity oh people forget about what's happened you know with us that's what we do if you are not successful in life you're not a successful businessman you're not a successful student what do we do we start complaining i'm not successful why it's my teacher he didn't teach me properly i was a failure in school why my parents didn't teach me properly I'm not successful why oh because someone has done black magic on me so many obstacles we start complaining and we say I'm a failure because of so and so I'm a failure because of my education I'm a failure because of my fa family background I'm a failure because I don't have contacts with people I'm a failure because so and so has contact with so and so politician and because of the politician they have all these mediators and they contact them and this person is given priority I'm not given priority because I've, I have a weak fa family background we start complaining don't we Look at the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated to Madinatul Munawwara. The first message of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not even a single statement about the way the people of Makkah treated the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was all a positive message. And from those people, Abdurrahman bin Auf radiyallahu taala anhu, a famous businessman, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Abdurrahman Tajirul Rahman. Do you know he's a multi-millionaire? We recently calculated the amount of money he left when he uh, passed away was 527 million American dollars at that time, and 10,000 camels, thousands of sheep, and a lot of land. You would not find many wealthy people who would have so much wealth today in our time. Abdul Rahman bin Auf radiyallahu taala was a very successful businessman. You know when we talk about ulama, they should start a business, they should become uh, traders and merchants. A lot of people they know we are tariq dunya. You know what's alim and dunya, alim and business. Alim should become we are tulab al ilm. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't involve with these kind of things. We are people of we are not people of dunya. Remember tijara, business, becoming a trader is part of al Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam motivated people. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Tajiru al-sadduq al-amin ma'al nabijin wa siddikin wa shuhada." Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a man, a tajir, a person, a truthful, honest tajir, in the hereafter will be with the prophets of Allah. He will be with awliya. You think that the man is a businessman, but if he is a man who is a man of honesty and he is a true businessman. And his business is halal because of that being an act of worship itself it's an ibadah in the hereafter he will be raised with the prophets of allah he will be raised with awliya he will be raised with shuhada so never demotivate our young people to say that you know a molvi can only become a molvi a scholar can only become a scholar no every person and for us to spread the word of islam i believe the students of deen and the students of dunya you should all try your utmost best to become independent businessmen and do it for the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do it for the sake of the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is part of our deen. Never be demotivated. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best motivator. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a brave businessman makes money. A brave businessman makes money, and a coward businessman is always deprived. Business is all about risk. You have to take risks. A student says, oh, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because why are you studying? I'm studying so that I can get a job. It's not all about that. Everyone is after a job. We Muslims as a community to be established, we should all start a good business and different ideas. Students should be given grants by people, by our Muslim community. If you can come out with a good idea to establish a good business, we will give you the grants. This should be the setup for the Muslims. Do not isolate Muslims, ulama. This is ulama. These are the people who are imams of the masjid. They shouldn't get involved in this. No. Why? Because from Ashara Mubashara, 
Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was one of the greatest businessmen of the community in the Muslims and he is guaranteed Jannah by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's from those 10 companions who was guaranteed Jannah in the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now this man left everything in Mecca. When he came to Madinatul Munawwara, he was a businessman in Mecca al Mukarramah. When he came to Madinatul Munawwara, he had nothing. When the Prophet ﷺ made him live with another companion, you know that the Ansar and the Muhajirun, so one Ansar was living with one uh, who traveled with the Prophet ﷺ. Now he was supposed to help Abdurrahman bin Awf anhu in feeding him and sharing whatever he had. Do you know what Abdurrahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala said to him? He said, I don't need your help. Just show me the direction to the market. I want to go to the market and I want to start my own business. He had nothing. He was penniless. He had nothing at all. He left everything in Mecca. He came to Madinatul Munawwara. He started his own business. And then when he passed away, he had $527 million of that time. He left for the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Where did he learn this? He learned from the positive messages given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was that? The very first message when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Madinatul Munawwara, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's first message was, he did not mention anything about the, how the people of Makkah treated Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He didn't mention anything. Oh, these people, they were evil people, they were bad people, they banished us, they, they, they forced us out, out of Makkah al Mukarrama. we are forced, we, are, we, are, we have been made to, to leave our birthplace, and nothing like that. What was the message? Ya Yuhannas, O people, Afshu salam, spread the message of peace. Spread the message of peace. That's the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَتُطْعِمُ taam. Feed people. Keep feeding people. And who is he addressing? People. Again, it's not that only feed Muslims. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, spread the message of peace. And feed people. Keep feeding people. And then the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's third point was, that wasallu bil that when people are asleep at night then wake up and worship allah jalla wa'ala look at the message the message doesn't begin with prayer the message begins with what spreading the message of peace love harmony and the second message is What's the second message? Feeding people. Feed people. The third point is worship of Allah Jalla wa ala. And then the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If you do this, وَتَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ bissalam. If you do this. Now look at this now. People who think that Islam has nothing to do with mercy and peace and, and love. This hadith starts with salam. Afshu salam. It ends with salam. And the narrator of this hadith is Abdullah bin Salam. It starts with salam, it ends with salam, and it is the hadith of the one upon whom we send salat or salam. And it is narrated by the man whose name has salam. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, whoever acts upon this, what will happen? He will end up in Darul Salam. What is Darul Salam? Jannah. And what will happen in Darul Salam? We will meet as Salam. Who is that? Allah. And what will he say? Salamun qawlam min Rabbir Rahim. He will read Salam. It's all about Salam. It begins with Salam. It ends with Salam. It is narrated by the one whose name is Salam. And it is the hadith of the one upon whom we send Salat and Salam. And where does this take us? It takes us to Salam. And who do we meet? As Salam. And what does As Salam do? He gives Salam. And we meet him and we give Salam to him. Islam is all about Salam. It is all about peace. I do not know how people have derived this teaching that Islam is about terror. Allah Islam is all about positivity. And then what did Abdullah bin Salam, what does he say? He said, when I saw the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the moment I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was so beautiful, he was so handsome. I realized this handsome man cannot be a liar. Undoubtedly, he is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
Allahu Akbar Kabira. So therefore, from this we learn that Islam is all about patience, it's all about forgiveness, it's all about mercy. And patience, look, it's mentioned, sabr. When someone harms you, we get angry, don't we? A lot of people get angry. We all get angry. It's human nature. We will get angry. We will react. But look at what Islam teaches us. Islam teaches us that, you know, anger, anger itself is very wise. Anger is very wise. How is anger wise? Anger is wise because it only comes out when there's someone weaker in front of you. You get angry, you know, if someone is stronger than you, physically stronger, these strong people in front of you, if you pick on someone like these guys here, these, these people, or if they shout at you, these gods, yes? You will get angry, or someone, a wealthy person, a politician, a person who has status in the society, if he mistreats you, your anger will come. You will get angry. But would you express your anger? What will happen? Anger will come, but you will run away. You will hide. Why? Because anger is very wise. As soon as you will go home, or, or your employer, your boss, at your workplace, he says something wrong to you, something that would make you angry in front of anyone else, or other people. But if he says that to you, and he's stronger than you, or you're in need of him. Anger will come out, but anger will hide. You will run away. When will he come out? As soon as you will come home, you will see your wife, the anger will come out again. He will come out with your children. He will come out in front of those who are weaker than you. Why? Because anger is very wise. It's only expressed in front of those who are weaker than you. But how can we utilize this anger? From this hadith, as sabr was samaha, patience and forgiveness. That's what Islam is all about. The Quran says, controlling the, remember, controlling the anger, you know the word qazim, of al ghayz is not only the state of controlling your anger in a way that you don't do anything with your anger, it is to channelize your anger. When you are anger, for instance, you're playing football and you want to become a footballer. And someone says, listen, you can't become a footballer. It's impossible. Now, you get angry at that person. You get angry. What do you want to do? You want to punch him. You want to hate him. How dare you say this? Now, I'm not talking about permissibility and impermissibility of playing football. The jawaz and the hukum of that. I'm just giving this as an example. In case someone gives a fatwa, why is he talking about football? Yes? I'm just giving an example. Yes? Someone wants to become a footballer, or someone wants to become a scholar, someone wants to become a businessman, anything like that. So this is just an example. So a, a person is playing cricket, football, and someone says, you can't be successful, it's impossible. He gets angry. Now that anger, he expresses it, he punches him, he hits him. What will happen? The anger came out, you got rid of it. But you know what a wise man will do? According to the teachings of the Sahaba, I've delivered detailed lectures on this subject. We don't have the time to go through all those examples of the companions and Rasulullah The Sahaba say that you channelize your anger. Rather than expressing it there, use your anger positively. Anger itself is an energy. There are two energies that we all need in order for us to be successful. Two types of energies. One is anger and one is love, emotion. When you're in love with someone, your love for people makes you successful. It gives you that jazba. It gives you that courage. It gives you that himma. It makes you so courageous that because you're in love with something, in order for you to achieve it, your love forces you to achieve your goals. One is love and the other is anger. A lot of people take anger negatively. Oh, I'm angry, it's bad. Yes, it's bad. It's bad when you use your anger in the wrong place. If someone makes you anger, preserve it. Preserve it. You want to become a footballer? Someone says, you can't become a footballer. If you hit that person, you take revenge, you hit him, what have you done? You wasted that positive energy. You should have preserved that and used it in training. Go and use that energy, train yourself more, and prove it by your own success, rather than expressing the anger. That comes from as sabr was samaha. Why were the companions successful people? Because they knew how to positively utilize their anger. They used their anger as a positive force. 
In the same way, Mahabba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala who was present in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he gave salam to the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and then he went away and Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know this man who came and gave you salam? I'm in love, this, I'm in love with this person. I love this person. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, have you informed him that you love him? Have you informed? He said, no, I haven't informed him. I have not informed him that I'm in love with him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, then you must go and inform him that you love him. Then Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he went, he followed him, and he said, I love you for the sake of Allah. I love you for the sake of Allah. He said, I love you for the same reason. The Sahabi came back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have informed him. The beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is a special reward. There is a special reward for the one who loves someone. And not only that he loves him, he goes and informs him that I love him. There is a special reward for that person. So from now on, let us make a habit. Because we want to increase this mahabba, we want to increase love between the believers. It's important if you want this love to increase, Inform people, whoever you have love for, never delay. Approach them, tell them, I have love for you for the sake of Allah. Where does this come from? It comes from the sunnah of the Prophet And this is one of the positive ways of controlling your anger. Keep telling people, if you have any inclination, may learn to it someone, and he's a believer, tell them, I love you for the sake of Allah. And there's a reward for this. There's a special, and for instance, in England we have this, practice that a lot of people say if I go and approach someone if I tell him I love him he will say what's happened to you all of a sudden you're saying this to me a brother will say what's wrong with you brother why are you saying this to me the Sahaba have taught us and in our manhaj we say this say to people like Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala said I wouldn't have told you but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me whenever you have love for someone go and approach them and tell them that I have love for you and there's a reward for this and that is a message for all of us tonight whoever you have love for never delay immediately approach them and tell them I have love for you and if they say why are you telling me this say that I came to the gathering of a Sufa foundation and from that I learned that a believer must inform other believers if they have love for them and there's a reward for this this is why I'm telling you why because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered me. I'm acting upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this gathering tonight, I have come here to see you. And I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. That I love you all for the sake of Allah. I love you for the sake of Allah. I don't want to delay this because it is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To inform people. What's the benefit of this? The benefit of this is if you have love for someone and you haven't told them. Someone else will come and tell that person. For instance, person A loves person B. But he hasn't informed person B that I love you. Yes? He hasn't informed person B that I love you. Person C may come and he may tell person B that person A hates you. Do you see? Person A loves person B, but he doesn't inform person B that I love him. Person C will come and he will say to person B, do you know person A was backbiting you, he hates you, he doesn't have any love for you? But if person A has already informed person B that I have love for you, person C comes to person B and he says A hates you, he will say no he doesn't hate me. He's already told me that he's in love with me. And if he's in love with me, then why would he hate me? So in order for us to avoid grievances, to avoid ikhtilafat, to avoid hatred, whoever you have love for, never delay, inform them. And remember, Love is something that is always from both sides, from two sides. One-sided love will always diminish. Remember this, this is very important for all of us. Hate and love will always diminish if it is one-sided. If you love someone and they don't love you back, then what will happen? No matter how much love you have for that person, ultimately that person, you will Stop loving that person because the other person doesn't love you. This is one reason why Imam Ahmad Riza, rahimahullah, he wrote a book called Adolatul Makiyah about the ilm of ghayb of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has the knowledge of the unseen. 
one of the wisdoms of this great work of Imam Ahmad Riza rahimahullah was because Imam Ahmad Riza knew, Allah Hazrat knew, a lot of people are claiming we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but I don't believe in Wasila. I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but I will not celebrate the Mawlid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but I do not believe in the Nur of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the Prophet is dead in his cover. He can't hear me. He doesn't know me. He has no knowledge about me. I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he doesn't have the knowledge of the unseen. I love him, but he doesn't even know me. A lot of people think like that. A lot of people claim to love the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They say we love him. But he doesn't know me. We love him, but he doesn't know me. What is the principle? If you love someone and that beloved of yours doesn't even love you, let alone loving you, he doesn't even know you. If he doesn't know you, what will happen? One-sided love will gradually diminish. It will end. It will die out. And this is why Iqbal says, You know these people? These people who give their life for Islam, they don't fear death. The only thing that you have to do, tell them, read your five times daily prayers, act upon the ahkam of deen, act, act upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu do everything that Islam orders you to do. But remember, the Prophet doesn't know you. What will happen? This will be one-sided love. And what is the result of one-sided love? One-sided love gradually dies out. If you want to establish love, if you want to maintain love, you have to have love from both sides. And both sides love is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When you love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and you know that when you send salawat upon the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa every time you send salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you send gifts to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he sends gifts back to you, he makes duas for you. What will happen? You have believed that he knows you and he has knowledge about you. This will strengthen your relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why the ulama say, how can you say, how can you have the audacity to say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't love you and then you say that we are spreading the message of love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you are liars you claim that you are spreading the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam amongst the ummah but in reality there is a hidden agenda and that is the hidden agenda of the enemies of Islam that make these Muslims believe that the Prophet ﷺ is dead, he has no knowledge, he doesn't know you, he cannot acknowledge what you're doing, he has no knowledge of your life, he doesn't know your name, so you can claim to love him. Ultimately what will happen, you will keep saying, I love him, I love him, I love him, but when you do not get the love back from the Prophet ﷺ, what will happen? It will result in distancing people from Rasulullah ﷺ. So remember this principle, love is always is successful when it is from two sides from both sides and that's not only love it's also hate love and hate both are only strengthened developed and established when it's from both sides love and hate if someone hates you you don't hate them back what will happen ultimately they will give up if someone reacts to words, I was told that the lecture will be in English, so that's why I'm talking in English. But inshallah, I will incorporate something in Urdu as well, yes? Is that, is, that, is that not working anymore? Is that not working anymore? Okay, just leave it there now. Don't bring it here now. So, what was I saying? If love is from one side, one-sided love, or hate is one-sided, what will happen? It will result in the love and hate diminishing. It will die out. If you love someone, the other person loves you, it will be strengthened. The same is the principle for hate. Someone is speaking against you. Someone is backbiting you, exposing you, speaking against, against you, saying that you're an evil person, you're a bad person. What happens? You respond. You say, he's calling me bad, I will call him bad. That was action from one side, and you react to the action. First action, there's no problem in that. The problem is with the reaction, the revenge, intiqam. In the action, there is no problem. The problem is with the reaction. Because the reaction leads to a chain reaction. If someone hates you, and you don't hate them back, what will happen? Ultimately, the hatred will end. It will die out. In life, 
in reality, you don't have enemies. Nobody in dunya is anti-others. Everyone is pro-self. Remember this. Everyone wants their own benefit. If people hate you, they don't hate you because they hate you. They hate you because you are an obstacle in their success. You establish a business. Another person establishes a business. More people come to his workplace, his, his shop. They will hate you. So rather than thinking that the person in reality hates me, we should think that this is a competition. Instead of thinking that this person hates me, we should think that this person is not anti-me, he's pro-self. He just wants success for himself. So if he hates you, rather than hating him back, what should we do? We should learn from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu samaha. Continue with what you are doing. Ignore that person. Because if you will hate him back, the reaction will lead to a chain reaction. If the reaction ends his hate, then you can react. But will it end? It never ends. What happens? His action, your reaction. Your reaction will lead to his action. Then your reaction, then his reaction, then his reaction. And what will happen? This will waste your entire life. You will be competing with each other and you will never be able to achieve success. The greatest wisdom of life is to avoid the development of chain reaction. If you can avoid, avoid chain reaction, if it becomes a chain, then that will destroy your life. A person came to me in England, he said, Someone attacked, only this started with a, an ice cream. A child was buying an ice cream and the father was from a greater tribe, like you have castes in, in, in India as well, you have them in other parts of the world, caste system. So he belonged to a greater caste. His son was buying an ice cream and in the queue there was a person who belonged to a different caste. And the father got angry and he said, look, I'm in front of the queue. He said, no, I belong to a greater caste, a greater zat or caste, so a greater qom, I don't know what term you use here. He said, my son will have the ice cream first. So this started into a fight, and then it led to a fight, and then one person ended up in the prison because of the fight. And then when he ended up in the prison, his other family, they murdered the other person. And then this murder led to many, many murders. Many, many murders. What was the problem? The problem was the reaction. First action led to a reaction and then one person was in the prison for 40 years. 40 years only because of that fight. Where did he start from? There's a beautiful share. You know when you're actually speaking in Urdu then the shar come. But when you speak in English and then you change um, from one language to another language it gets a bit difficult. So what happens? So because of that, so I was saying that because of that reaction, it led to what? 40 years of imprisonment. What did he have to do? The only thing is, okay, yaar, tu bade ka. You, you are bigger than me. You, your son can have the ice cream first. But what happened? One thing led to action, reaction, then it became a chain reaction. So if, if you want to be successful in life, learn from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu As sabru was samaha is iman, that's belief. Ignore people. You know, if you're playing tennis and one person strikes a tennis ball from one side to the other side and the other person catches the tennis ball and he doesn't strike back, will the tennis game continue? Will it continue? It will not continue. He catches the ball, he puts it in his pocket. Then he goes and buys another ball, he throws the ball again, he strikes the ball again, this person once again catches it and puts it in his pocket. Yes? How many new tennis balls will he buy and he will strike? Ultimately, he will give up, won't it? Meaning if someone's backbiting you, speaking against you, he's throwing his good deeds towards you. And what are you doing? You're not reacting. You're just catching the good deeds, you're putting him in your pocket. Thank you very much, you're giving me all your good deeds. Will this game continue? The tennis game will not continue. The game of hate only continues when it is from both sides. If it's one-sided, it will never continue. The way the game of love will never continue if it's from one side. In the same way, the game of hate will never continue. It will diminish if it is from one side. So if someone says things like, just remain quiet. Ignore. Ignore. Completely ignore them. Let them do what they're doing. And if that makes you an angry, use that anger as a positive energy to be successful in your life. But this is for personal things. This is for private life, for your own life. Not when it comes to the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then we do not forgive, yes? 
Because when it comes to the defending the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then ho halka e yaran to bare sham ki tara narm razm hak ko baatil ho to faulad hai mu'min. Then the believer becomes faulad. Then he reacts. But when it is his personal life, if someone attacks you, do not react. Because the wisdom that we learn from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what is the greatest wisdom of life? To avoid the development of a chain reaction. And if you want to love someone, if you love someone, tell them immediately. Do not delay. Because when you delay, then what happens? Then other people will create hatred. This is how we establish mahabba. And one of the signs of mahabba, how do you know whether you truly love someone or not? How do you know whether you love people or not? How, how would you identify that whether you love someone or not? Remember, Sayyiduna Mawla Ali Karramallahu Wajahul Kareem said, to identify true love, there is a principle. Whoever you remember in times of happiness is the person that you love. Whoever you remember in times of happiness is the person that you love. And whoever you remember in times of sorrow and grief is the person that loves you. Do you see? Do you understand? Think about it. Think about who, who is the first person that you phone when you pass your exams? Who is the first person you phone, you think about when you're successful in life, when you make a lot of money, or you hear good news? Whenever you hear good news, who do you think about? The first person that crosses your mind is the person that you are in love with. And when you're in pain, who is the first person that you think about? Whoever you think about in times of pain and sorrow, is not the one that you love. That's the one that loves you. Do you see? People say to me, Shaykh, I love you so much. Okay? What's your proof that you love me? You know, whenever I'm in need, whenever I'm in pain, you're the first one that I call. I say, Mawla Ali Karramallah wa Jal Kareem says, that doesn't mean that you love me. That means your Shaykh loves you. Do you see? Because whoever you remember when you're in pain, that person loves you. Whoever you remember when you're happy, whenever you hear the good news, that's your beloved. You're in love with that person. You know when you hear the good news, and at home you go with your wife, you go out for a picnic, you take them for an outing, but you don't even talk to your parents. You don't even discuss it with your parents. You don't even share your good news with your parents. But you discuss it with your children, with your wife. And then whenever you're in pain, you discuss it with your parents. What does that mean? You've ignored your parents in times of happiness, you didn't make a phone call to your parents. You didn't discuss your happiness with your parents. But you discussed your happiness with your friends. You went out with your mates, with your friends. And then you say, I love my parents. No, you don't love your parents. When you were in, in pain, you remembered your parents. That doesn't mean that you love your parents. That means your parents love you. You know, people say this, as soon as they're in pain, you know, they will have a hat on their head, they will have a tasbih in their hands, they will have a musalla, Allah, Allah, zikrullah, durudu salam. Why? I have so many enemies, I have so many problems, I need to pass my exams, I need success in dunya, I need success in this, I need success in that. I'm a great Muslim, I'm a great believer, I'm a great person of Allah, I follow the ahkam of deen. Why? I love Allah, I love Allah. Why? I'm in pain, I'm remembering Allah. That doesn't mean you love Allah, that means Allah loves you. Because when you're in pain, you remember Allah. When you're in pain, you're remembering Allah. That doesn't mean you love Allah. That means Allah loves you. Sayyidina Ali Karramallah Wajal Karim says, How do you test? What is the merit of love? How do you know whether you love someone or not? Whenever you are happy, do you make a phone call to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? When you pass your exams, do you contact the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? When you have success in life, do you talk to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You don't. If you don't, when you, if you remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when you're in pain, that doesn't mean that you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That means Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves you. So let us understand this. If you want to truly fall in love with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you truly want to know who you love, then we need to ask, who is the first person we remember when we hear happy news? Let us make this niyyah in this gathering. From this day forth, from now on, onwards, whenever we hear a happy news, what is the first thing we will do? We will phone Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do you make a phone call? How do you share your happiness with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? 
And remember, this is what our aslaf say. If you want to develop and increase your love for Rasulullah whenever you hear a happy news, share your happy news with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Share your happy news with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What will happen? That will increase your muhabba for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How do you share your happy news with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Whenever you hear happy news, go home immediately and hold a gathering of salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That is your phone call to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You give some sadaqah, give some sadaqah and say, this is for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You feed the poor and say this is for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how we establish our link with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The other practical method of loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, increasing our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like I started from the beginning, that you love the ummah and you love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and hating the ummah is not loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The other point is, we must study the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not studying seerah in the form of knowledge only. Knowledge, information, no. When we study the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu we must take notes. Study the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and take notes. The goat spoke to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How did the goat speak speak to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? The the camel spoke to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How did the camel speak to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? We have all these questions, don't we? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fought in the battlefield. So and so companion gave his life to the Prophet for the sake of Rasulullah. How did this happen? Study the seerah. When you study the seerah, make notes in your notebook. Make a note and say to yourself, and this is what we do every day in our organization, Kunzul Huda. Every member, it's necessary upon every member to study the seerah of the Prophet every day and to make notes. And what notes? In the notes, we write down that when I will die, I will be with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in Jannah. And in Jannah, I will ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how did the goat speak to you? I will ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how did the camel speak to you? That incident that took place in the seerah, how did it happen? This is how we connect ourselves. Don't just take the knowledge of seerah. This is the difference between the deviants, the gustaks of the Prophet ﷺ. When they write the books of seerah, or when they read the books of seerah, they read seerah as information. We read seerah to connect with Rasulullah ﷺ. We envisage the beauty of Rasulullah ﷺ. We think about the beautiful smile of Rasulullah ﷺ. We think about the beautiful hair of Rasulullah ﷺ. We think about the beautiful eyes of Rasulullah ﷺ. We think about the shining teeth of Rasulullah We shed tears in the love of the Prophet When we read the books of Sirah, we envisage and imagine how the beloved Sallallahu used to walk in the streets of Madinah Tul Munawwara. We imagine the streets of Madinah Tul Munawwara. We imagine the son of Amina, how he would walk in the streets of Madinah and how the companions of Rasulullah how they would beauty, see the beautiful face of Rasulullah and then how they would make a comparison between the beauty and the light of the face of Rasulullah the light that is emanating from Rasulullah's face and the light of the sun and then they would say oh son you are a son you have light undoubtedly but the nur that is coming out of the face of the son of Amina is far greater than the nur that is coming out of the sun oh son you have nur but this is the nur that has come from the son of Amina this is why they would say Hikmahe adan nurani badan nichi nazare sab ki khabare wo dikha ke pavan wo suna ke so when we read the seerah, when we study the seerah of Rasulullah we fall in love with the beauty of Rasulullah We think about the beauty of Rasulullah We take notes and we think, Oh beloved, when we will see you in Jannah. Oh beloved, when our eyes will be exalted with the divine vision of the beauty of Rasulullah When we will spend time with you in Jannah. We will talk to you. We will talk about our times in dunya. We will talk about your, your life, Ya Rasulullah Connect your hearts. Don't just take it as information. Don't just take it as knowledge. Connect your hearts with beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. How do we do that? Share your good news with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Share your happy news. And also when you study the seerah, connect your hearts with the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Take notes and between two prayers, between every two prayers, every day when you take notes, you will see the smiling is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So make a note. Today, between two prayers, I will act, at least do one practice for the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu You're walking on the streets. You see someone. You smiled. Smile at a believer for the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi And say, after Fajr, Fajr, between Fajr and Zuhr, I smiled. I smiled to make Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa happy. Then, at Zuhr time, when I will read the shahud, At-Tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu, then I will send salam, I will say, As-Salamu alayka, ayyuhan nabi. That is our one-to-one -one connection with the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the ummati's link with the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our one-to-one -one communication with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't want to go into the hikai narration and all of that. For me, Imam Ghazali is enough, he's sufficient. That believe that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in your heart. And make that one-to-one -one communication and say, Oh beloved of Allah, today between Fajr and Zuhr, I did one thing for your pleasure. What was that? I smiled. Because when you study seerah, your life should revolve around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When you take notes every day and make an intention that between every two prayers, I will at least do one thing for the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then in the books of seerah, you will read, combing the hair is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So in the morning, when you will comb your hair, just make your intention. Today, I'm combing my hair. Why? To please Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I need to report back at the time of Zuhr when I will offer Zuhr prayer, when I will say, Assalamu alaikum, ayyuhan nabi. Why are you doing this? Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa today I was combing my hair, I did it for your happiness because it's your sunnah. When you brush your teeth, every day when you read the books of Sirah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to brush his teeth. When you brush your teeth, you're going to do that anyway, anyway, won't you? Every day you will brush your teeth, just change your intention. Whilst brushing your teeth, say, today I'm brushing my teeth, why? To please Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because I need to report back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Between every two prayers, I must do one thing for the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today I'm brushing my teeth for the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then... You're walking on the streets, you see some litter, you see some rubbish, you pick it up. Cleaning the roads is from the sunnah of the Prophet You did that, you did it for the sake of Rasulullah So you make a note, I will report back in the next prayer, between Zahur and Asr, that, oh beloved, keeping the streets clean, you love greenery, to maintain greenery. I'm doing this for your sake, Ya Rasulullah Someone gives you a glass of water and you thank him. Your work colleague gives you something, you thank him. Malam yashkurin nasalam yashkurillah. Whosoever doesn't thank the people has not thanked Allah. Today I'm thanking him. Why? Because it pleases Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I need to at least do one thing for the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So between two prayers, at least do one act which is for the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the second practice. Third practice, in order for us to truly love with Rasul, fall in love with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is that? The third practice in order for us to truly love in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make your parents make du'as for you. How many people present here do this? Who does this? Only three, four people. This is nisabul ishq. Practical methods of falling in love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our spiritual masters have taught us, if you want to truly fall in love with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ask your mother, Ask your father, oh father, give me dua that I, I become a true ashik of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ask your mother, oh mother, give me dua. Ye nisab e ishq hai. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam se mahabbat karne ka practical method bata raha hoon. Ek toh na sarkar ki shan ko bayan karna, sarkar ki azmat ko bayan karna. Yani agar bani israel ke nabi Musa alayhi wa sallam ke door mein, agar ek ummati ko, فقط اس لیے موسیٰ علیہ السلام کا قرب مل گیا وہ واقعہ تو آپ جانتے ہیں نا تمام احباب جانتے ہوں گے کہ موسیٰ علیہ السلام نے اللہ سے پوچھا تھا ہے اللہ جنت میں میرا رفیق کون ہوگا تو اللہ نے ارشاد فرمایا تھا فلان قصاب فلان قصاب قصائی a butcher will be your neighbor in جنہ a butcher will be your neighbor in جنہ موسیٰ علیہ السلام نے پوچھا address کیا ہے اس کا ہے اللہ بتا اس کا پتہ کیا ہے اللہ نے ارشاد فرمایا کہ فلان جگہ فلان مارکٹ پلیس میں وہ گوشت کاٹ کاٹ کے بیچتا ہے تو سیدنا موسیٰ علیہ نبی علیہ السلام اس کی تلاش میں چلے گئے 
اور پورا دن دیکھتے رہے کہ اس کا عمل کون سا ہے وہ کون سی ادا ہے جو اللہ کو پسند آ گئی اور جنت میں وہ بنی اسرائیل کے نبی موسا علیہ السلام کا رفیق ہوگا دیکھا کہ وہ گوشت کاٹ کے بیچ رہا ہے جب دکان بند کرتا ہے باہر آتا ہے موسا علیہ السلام اس کا تعاقب کرتے ہیں اس کے گھر تک جاتے ہیں موسا علیہ السلام اسے کہتے ہیں تیرے گھر کے اندر چلا جاؤں اس نے کہا اللہ کے بندے آ جاؤ اس نے پہچانا نہیں کہ موسا علیہ السلام ہے موسا علیہ السلام اس کے گھر اندر چلے جاتے ہیں دیکھتے ہیں کہ وہ گھر جاتا ہے جاتے ہی کھانا پکاتا ہے لیکن کھانا خود نہیں کھاتا گھر کے کونے میں اس کی ایک ایک بڑھیا ایک ضعیف عورت لیٹی ہوئی ہے اسے کھانا کھلاتا ہے اٹھاتا ہے بٹھاتا ہے اس کے منہ میں نوالے ڈالتا ہے وہ کھانا کھاتی ہے اور پھر اس کا منہ صاف کرتا ہے منہ صاف کرنے کے بعد اس کے منہ میں پانی ڈالتا ہے اسے پانی پلاتا ہے پھر اسے لٹاتا ہے جب وہ لیٹتی ہے تو لیٹتے ہوئے اس کی زبان سے چند کلمات نکلتے ہیں موسا علیہ السلام فرماتے ہیں یہ کون ہے اس نے کہا پورا دن میں گھر میں گھر کی طرف میرا ذہن ہوتا ہے دھیان میرا گھر کی طرف ہوتا ہے میں دکان میں کام کرتا ہوں لیکن میرا ذہن گھر کی طرف ہوتا ہے کہا یہ کون ہے کہا یہ میری ماں ہے میں جب گھر آتا ہوں کھانا نہیں کھاتا سب سے پہلے اسے کھلاتا ہوں اور اس کی خدمت کرتا ہوں پورا دن جب کام پر ہوتا ہوں تو میرا ذہن اسی کی طرف راغب رہتا ہے کہا یہ تو میں دیکھ رہا ہوں لیکن یہ تو بتا کہ جب یہ لیٹ رہی تھی تو نے اسے پانی پلایا تو نے اس کو منہ صاف کیا لیٹتے ہوئے اس کی زبان سے چند کلمات نکلے وہ کیا تھے اس نے کہا کیا بتاؤں ہے اللہ کے بندے مائیں تو مائیں ہوتی ہیں نا ماں کو کیا پتا کہ بیٹے کی وقت کیا ہے حیثیت کیا ہے میں تو ایک گنہ گار انسان ہوں میرا کیا مقام لیکن یہ اللہ کی بندی میری اس خدمت کو دیکھ کر ایک دعا دیتی ہے کہا کیا دعا دیتی ہے کہا یہ کہتی ہے کہ اللہ تیری اس خدمت کو قبول کرے اور جا تو جنت میں بنی اسرائیل کے نبی موسا کا رفیق ہو کہاں میں کسائی کا بیٹا کہاں موسا نبی اللہ میں گنہ گار سے اکار لیکن مائیں تو مائیں ہی ہوتی ہیں ماں تو اپنے بیٹے کو دعا دیتی ہے موسا علیہ السلام نے فرمایا ہر نادان انسان آنکھیں کھول دیکھ اس ماں کی دعا قبول ہو گئی ہے آج بنی اسرائیل کا نبی موسا تیری ماں کی دعا کی برکت سے آج تجھے دیکھنے کے لیے آیا ہے میں کہتا ہوں ماں سے دعا لیا کرو اگر 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 نعرے نہ لگاؤ نعرے کی کوئی ضرورت نہیں وقت ختم ہو گیا ہے کاش کہ تم مجھے پیت بتاتے کہ اردو میں بیان کرنا ہے تو شروع ہی میں اردو میں کرتا لیکن الحمدللہ گرچہ میں خانہ سخن کا گدائے جدید ہوں ہر رنگ کی شراب پیالے میں ہے میری میں آپ کو پہلے انگریزی پلا چکا ہوں اب ذرا دیسی شراب بھی پلاؤں یہ شراب عشق مصطفیٰ ہے میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی محبت کی شراب ہے آپ کو پلاتا ہوں صرف یہ بتانا چاہتا ہوں کہ ماں سے کہا کرو ہے ماں تو مجھے دعا دے کہ میرے دل میں عشق مصطفیٰ پیدا ہو ہے ماں تو مجھے دعا دے کہ آخرت میں مجھے نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا قرب ملے کہ اگر موسا علیہ السلام کے دور کے امتی کی ماں کی دعا قبول ہوئی اور وہ امتی موسا علیہ السلام کا جنت میں رفیق ہوگا تو تو کیا سمجھتا ہے تم تو سب امتوں سے بہتر امت ہو تمہارے آقا سب آقاؤں سے اور سب انبیاء سے افضل ام نبی ہیں اگر تم اپنی ماں سے کہو گے اپنے والد سے ہر روز کہو گے کہ ہے میرے والد صاحب ایک دعا دو اور کچھ نہیں چاہتا نہ دنیا چاہتا ہوں نہ دولت چاہتا ہوں نہ شہرت چاہتا ہوں فقط ایک تمنا ایک آرزو ایک خواہش ہے آپ دعا دیں اور دل سے دیں کہ آخرت میں مجھے میرے آقا کا پڑوس مل جائے تو بتاؤ موسا علیہ السلام کے امتی کی ماں کی دعا قبول ہو سکتی ہے تو میرے آقا کی امتی ماں کی دعا قبول کیوں نہیں ہو سکتی تم اپنی ماں سے التجا کیا کرو اپنے باپ سے التجا کیا کرو کہا کرو کہ میں بھی اس آقا کا قرب حاصل کرنا چاہتا ہوں میں بھی ان کا دیدار حاصل کرنا چاہتا ہوں ہم صحابہ کے دور میں نہیں تھے لیکن ہم نے واقعات تو پڑھے ہیں کہ وہ کتنے حسین ہیں وہ کتنے خوبصورت ہیں وہ ایسے خوبصورت ہیں کہ ایک مرتبہ مدینت المنورہ سے میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم باہر تشریف لے جاتے ہیں مدینت المنورہ کے مضافات میں سیر کر رہے ہیں اور دیکھتے ہیں کہ ایک قافلے نے پڑاؤ کیا ہوا ہے ایک قافلہ اور اس قافلے کے جو لوگ ہیں سردار وہ وہاں پر دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ وہ اونٹ چر رہے ہیں تو میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو ایک اونٹ نظر آیا ایک اونٹ میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے دیکھا سرخ اونٹ علماء جانتے ہیں کہ عرب کے سرخ اونٹ کی کتنی قیمت ہے میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے جب اس سرخ اونٹ کو دیکھا نا تو میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے شاید فرمایا یہ اونٹ مجھے پسند آ گیا ہے میں اس کو خریدنا چاہتا ہوں کیا خوش قسمت ہے وہ اونٹ اس اونٹ کی قسمت پہ ہم ناز کیوں نہ کریں جو میرے آقا کو پسند آ گیا میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے شاید فرمایا میں اس اونٹ کو خریدنا چاہتا ہوں اس کو بیچتے ہو وہ لوگ میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو دیکھ رہے ہیں قافلے والے دیکھ رہے ہیں میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے حسن کو دیکھ رہے ہیں اور انہوں نے کہا ہاں بیچتے ہیں میرے آقا نے ارشاد فرمایا بیٹھ سے یہاں پہ میرے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ارشاد سٹ ڈاؤن ہو جس کو ڈاؤن اب ادھ
इस बंदे का पता पूछा था एड्रेस पूछा था ये कौन है कहा नहीं पूछा था कहा नाम पूछा था जानते हो कहा नहीं कोई जामिन कहा कोई जामिन नहीं कहा क्यों नहीं पूछा क्यों नहीं पूछा ये कैसे हो सकता है भाई अगर कोई शख्स किसी से कोई उधार ले तो उधार लेने के लिए नाम पता होना चाहिए एड्रेस पता होना चाहिए इतना महंगा अरब का सुर्ख ऊंट एक बंदा उधार लेके जा रहा है लेकिन नाम भी नहीं बता रहा एड्रेस भी नहीं बता रहा और कोई चीज़ गिरवी भी नहीं रख रहा और फिर कोई ज़मानत देने वाला भी नहीं कहा तुम्हारे अकल पर पर्दे पड़ गए थे क्या हो गया था एक शख्स बोला यार क्या बताऊं वो जब बातें करता था ना तो उसके मुँह से फूल जड़ते थे मैं तो उसकी बातें ही सुनता रह गया उसका कलाम इतना मीठा सा उसके लबों की मिठास ऐसी थी कि वो के वो जब कलाम करता था तो उसके कलाम की मिठास मैं सुनता था मैं उस कलाम से महजूज होता था वो गुल हैं लभाए नाजुक उनके हजारों झड़ते हैं फूल जिनसे गुलाब गुलशन में देखे बुलबुल ये देख गुलशन गुलाब में है उन्हीं की बू माया समन है उन्हीं का जलवा चमन चमन है उन्हीं की रंगत गुलाब में है उन्हीं से गुलशन महक रहे हैं मेरे आका सल्ला वसलम का हुसन ऐसा था तुम कहते हो पता पूछते एड्रेस पूछते नाम की होश हमें कहाँ रही हमें तो याद ही नहीं रहा कि हम पूछते आपका एड्रेस क्या हम तो उसके हुसन के जलवे देखते रहे एक शख्स ने कहा हरे नादानो इतना महंगा ऊंट था वो ऊंट ले गया तुमने नाम तक नहीं पूछा एड्रेस तक नहीं पूछा एक शख्स बोला तुम तो उसके कलेमात सुनते रहे तुम तो उसके मीठे बोल सुनते रहे अरे मैं तो उसकी कुंडल कुंडल जुल्फों को देखता रह गया उसकी काली जुल्फों का हुसन ऐसा था दिल में जिगर में आंख में बस तू ही तू रहे इसके सिवा न दिल में कोई आर रहे इसके सिवा न दिल में कोई आर रहे और जन्नत मेरे नसीब की वाइस बख्श दे मेरे कफन में गैस हुए जाना की बू रहे कहा मेरे कफन में गैस हुए जाना की बू रहे अरे हमें तो वो कुंडल वाली जुल्फे इतनी प्यारी लगी उनकी काली काली जुल्फों में जुल्फों के पेचो खम में मैं ऐसा गुम हो गया मुझे ख्याल ही ना रहा एक शख्स बोला अरे तू जुल्फों की बातें करता है अरे मैं तो उसके दांतों की चमक देखता रह गया उसके दांत जब वो मुस्कुराता था उसका नूर सामने वाले पहाड़ों में नजर आता था मैं उसके लबों पर तबस्म की खिलखिलाहट देखता उसके लबों पर मुस्कुराहट देखता और फिर मैं सामने वाले पहाड़ों पर उसका नूर देखता अरे उसके दांतों की चमक ऐसी थी गोया के वो भी कह रहा था या सी की चमक है दांतन में ताहा का करिश्मा आंखन में वल फजर का जलवा गालन में वो अर्श का तारा आवत है वो अर्श का तारा आवत है वो अर्श का तारा आवत है अरे कोई उनके दांतों को देख रहा कोई उनके लबों पर तबस्म की खिलखिलाहट देख रहा कोई माजाक के सुर्ख कजले देख रहा कोई मजाक के सुर्ख दौरे देख रहा कोई वल फजर के गाल देख रहा कोई वह शम्स के नूर को देख रहा है कोई मेरे आका के चलने को देख रहा कोई आने को देख रहा है कोई जाने को देख रहा है कहा लेकिन कीमत तो पूछते कीमत तुमने बताई है एड्रेस तो पूछते नाम तो पूछते कोई चीज़ गिरवी तो रख लेते कोई जमानत तो देता कहा जमानत का कहाँ ख्याल हमारा अकल कहाँ काबू में था अकल पर तहकुम नहीं था कोई काबू नहीं था कहा क्या हुआ कहा तुम जुल्फों को देख रहे थे तुम मीठे बोल सुन रहे थे तुम दांतों को देख रहे थे मैं तो उनकी आंखों के हुसन में खो गया था उनकी आंखों का हुसन ही ऐसा था एक शख्स अचानक बोल के कहता है हरे नादानो नादानो कोई तो पूछता ना कोई तो पूछता ना देखो वो तुम्हारा ऊंट लेकर गया है ऊंट लेकर चला गया है तो एक शख्स ने कलाम में कुछ ऐसे सल सख्त कलेमात कहे गोया कि उसने ऐसा तासुर दिया कि ऊंट चोरी हो गया है गोया कि ऊंट चोरी हो गया है कोई ऊंट हथियार के ले गया है तो अचानक जब ये तासुर दिया गया ना तो अचानक उस काफले के सरदार की बीवी वो खेमे के अंदर बैठी हुई थी खेमे की ओट से अचानक बोलती है खबरदार 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 कोई ये ना कहे कि ऊंट चोरी हो गया है अना दामिन जमली कुम मैं जमानत देती हूँ अगर उसने कीमत ना दी वो जो चला गया है अगर उसने कीमत ना दी तो उसकी कीमत की जमानत मैं देती हूँ मैं कीमत अदा कर दूंगी उन्होंने कहा ठीक है शुक्र है कोई तो है उसको जानने वाला कोई तो है जो उसको पहचानता है कोई तो है जो उसकी जमानत दे रहा है कहा अच्छा तू तो जानती है ना कहा नहीं नहीं जानती मैं भी नहीं हूँ कि वो कौन है कहा फिर जमानत का है कि देती हो अगर तू जानती नहीं कहा असल हुआ ये कि जब वो उन लोगों से बात कर रहा था तुम्हारे लोगों से बात कर रहा था जब वो कह रहा था ना ऊंट ले जाना चाहता हूं ऊंट खरीदना चाहता हूं तो मैंने खेमे की ओट से उसका हसीन चेहरा देख लिया था जो इतना सोना हो इतना खूबसूरत हो वो जूठा नहीं हो सकता कहा जो इतना खूबसूरत हो वो जूठा नहीं हो सकता 
मैं जमानत देती हूँ वो झूठ नहीं बोल सकता वो झूठा नहीं हो सकता अभी मेरे आका सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि सल्ला मदीना तुलमनवरा पहुँचते हैं थोड़ी देर के बाद इनकी बातें जारी हैं अचानक देखते हैं इनका कलाम आपस में जारी है अचानक देखते हैं मेरे आका के चंद गुलाम आते हैं आते हैं खजूरें देते हैं कहते हैं ये तुम्हारी ज़ियाफत के लिए अब बताओ उस ऊँट की कीमत कैसे थी हम उन्हीं के गुलाम हैं कीमत अदा करने के लिए आए हैं आओ बताओ कीमत कितनी थी कहा अब सौदे वाली बात ना करो कहा क्यों कहा अब तो हमारा सौदा हो चुका है अब हमारा सौदा हो चुका है अब तो हम खुद बिक चुके हैं कहा बिक चुके हो अरे बताओ वो सोना आया कहां से था वो प्यारा आया कहां से था अरे वो सुर्ख वो सुर्ख डोरू वाला आया कहां से था वो गुंगरियाले बालू वाला आया कहां से था उसका नाम क्या था कहा अरे देखो ना वो देखते नहीं वो सब्ज झुंड वो खजूरों के दरख्त अरे वही तो मदीना है वो मदीने से आया था ये तुम्हारी खुशकिस्मती है कि तुम्हारा गुजर इन गलियों से हुआ है जिन गलियों में वो गुजरता है वो आमना का लाल है वो मोहम्मद अरबी है ये सारा काफिला वहां जाता है सारे मुसलमान हो जाते हैं मुसलमान होकर वापस आते हैं किस नाज और इफ्तार से गोया कि वो भी कह रहे हूं ये नाज ये अंदाज हमारे नहीं होते जोली में अगर टुकड़े तुम्हारे नहीं होते मिलती ना अगर भीख हजूर आपके दर से इस शान के सौदे में खसारे नहीं होते बेदाग ही बिक जाइए बाजार नबी में बेदाम ही बिक जाइए बाजार नबी में इस शान के सौदे में खसारे नहीं होते यूँ मेरे आका सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम को जो देख लेता है जो उनके हुसन को देख दे है यूँ उसको प्यार हो जाता है यूँ उसको इश्क हो जाता है मैं कहता हूँ सीरत मुस्तफ़ा सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम पढ़ो लेकिन इश्क की एनक लगा के पढ़ो इश्क के साथ पढ़ो आप दीवाने हो जाओगे दुनिया का हुसन भूल जाओगे दुनिया की मोहब्बत तुम्हारे दिल से निकल जाएगी इश्क करना चाहते हो प्यार करना चाहते हो तो प्यार के चंद निकास जो आज आपकी बारगाह में पेश किए इनको समझो अपनों तक भी गैरों तक भी सैदना बिलाल से किसी ने पूछा था है बिलाल तुम कैसे ईमान लाए कैसे ईमान लाए तो बिलाल रदी अल्लाह ने क्या खूबसूरत जुमला इर्शाद फरमाया उन्होंने फरमाया क्या पूछते हो मैं मक्कतुलमकरमा में रहता था गुलाम था उमैया बिन खल्फ मेरा आका था मुझ पर जुल्म करता था लेकिन मैं मक्कतुलमदीना मक्कतुलमकरमा के लोगों को जानता नहीं था मेरा उनसे ताल्लुक नहीं था उनसे रबता नहीं था मैं घर के अंदर रहता अपने आका की खिदमत करता लेकिन वह ालिम था मुझ पर म करता था मुझे मारता था एक रात जब मैं शदीद बुखार के मर्ज़ में मुबतला था सख्त सर्दी थी मुझे बहुत बुखार था तो उसने मुझे कहा रात भर काम कर लेकिन मैंने दवा ली कंबल ओढ़ के मैं सो गया लेट गया मेरा मालिक आया मेरा आका आया रात लेट तारखिर से मुझे उसने जगाया कंबल उठाया और मुझे कहा अब काम कर और मुझे कहा कि अब अब तू आसमान के नीचे कोई छत नहीं है सख्त सर्दी थी कहा खुले मैदान में अब तुझे ये दो किलो जो इसको चक्की में पीसना होगा और तू सारी रात मेहनत करता रहे कमीज पहनने की भी इजाज़त नहीं है तुझे मैंने चक्की पीसने के लिए कहा था और तू सो गया उसने मुझे कहा कि अब कमीज पहनने की भी इजाजत नहीं कहा शदीद बुखार था सख्त सर्दी थी और फिर खुले मैदान में मुझ पर जुल्म किया और कहा कि कमीज भी उतार दे बिलाल हबशी रदी अल्लाह तु फरमाते हैं कि मैं रो रहा था मेरी आंखों से अशकों की बरसात जारी थी मेरे कराहने की आवाज़ घर के बाहर जा रही थी अभी मैं चक्की पीस रहा था सख्त बुखार की हालत में शदीद सर्दी थी मैं चक्की पीस रहा था कि अचानक हसनैन के नाना का गुजर मेरे घर के बाहर से हुआ मदीने वाले का गुजर मेरे घर के बाहर से हुआ नबी करीम सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ने मेरे दरवाजे पर दस्तक दी आका ने दरवाजे पर दस्तक दी मैंने दरवाजा खोला कहा क्यों रो रहे हो क्यों रो रहे हो मैंने कहा जाइए साहेब लोग पूछने वाले तो बहुत होते हैं गम खार बन के बहुत आते हैं लेकिन गम का मदावा कौन करता है मदद कौन करता है पूछते तो बहुत हैं कहा मैंने ये जुमले कहे मेरे जुमलों में कुछ सख्ती थी मेरे जो कलाम में कुछ तरख लहजा भी था आका सल्ला वसलम तशरीफ़ ले गए तो मैंने कहा हाँ देखो ना ऐसा होता है पूछने वाले बहुत होते हैं लेकिन गम का मदावा कौन करता है मदद कौन करता है हुजूर चले गए मैंने जाते हुए देखा तो मैंने सोचा चले गए अब वापस कहां आएंगे कहा अभी चंद लम्हे ही गुजरे थे कि मोहम्मद अरबी फिर मेरे घर में आ गए मेरे आका के हाथ में गिलास है प्याला है दूध का दूध का प्याला मुझे देते हैं और कहते हैं तुम लेट जाओ सो जाओ मुझे कंबल दिया मुझे कहा आप लेट जाओ मैंने कहा अरे देखो मुझे लेटने के लिए कह रहे हो लेकिन मेरा आका तो बहुत जालिम है वो तो मुझे मारता 
करता है वो बहुत जुल्म करेगा चक्की कैसे पीसूंगा ये काम उसने दिया हुआ है तो देखो वो जो वो जो सबब वजूद कायनात हैं वो जो कौनैन के वाली हैं वो जो खसरव खूबा हैं वो जो सयाह लामक हैं वो जो नाजिश हर दो जहाँ हैं वो जिनके सबब से ये कायनत बनी उनका अमल देखो उनका अमल क्या था वो जो आका हैं वो ना होते कुछ ना होता ज़मीन ना होती आसमान ना होते चांद तारे ना होते इसीलिए कहा ज़मीन और जमा तुम्हारे लिए मकीन और मका तुम्हारे लिए चुनी न चुना तुम्हारे लिए बने दो जहाँ तुम्हारे लिए हम आए जहाँ तुम्हारे लिए उठें भी वहाँ तुम्हारे लिए वो जो मिसदा के लौ ला का लमा खलक तो दुनिया है वो जो मिसदा के लौ ला का लमा खलक तो अफलाक हैं अगर वो ना होते कुछ ना होता इसीलिए तो कहा ना ये सबा सनक वो कली चटक ये जुबा चहक लब जो झलक ये महक झलक ये चमक धमक सब उसी के दम की बहार है ये समन ये सोसन या समन ये बनफ सुबुल नस्तरन गुल सरवे लाला भरा चमन वही एक जलवा हजार है वो न था तो बाघ में कुछ न था वो न हो तो बाघ वो सब फना बाब झुका लो सरे विला के मैं नाम लू गुल बाघ का गुल तर मोहम्मद मुस्तफ़ा चमन उन का पाक दयार है चमन उन का पाक दयार है चमन उन का पाक दयार है कहा वो जो सब वजूद कायनात हैं मेरे आका बिलाल ने पूछा बिलाल ने कहा कि ये जालिम तो मुझे मारेगा ये तो जुल्म करेगा आप कहते हैं लेट जाएं लेकिन देखो आज मैं कहता हूँ हिंदुस्तान में रहने वालों मैंगलोर में रहने वालों अगर तुम्हारे पड़ोसी तुम्हें कहते हैं कि हुजूर दहशत की तालीम देते हैं हुजूर नफरत फैलाते हैं अरे देखो तो सही वो जो सबब वजूद कायनत हैं जिनकी वजह से ये सारी कायनत मार्ज वजूद में आई उनकी अदाएँ तो देखो उनके अंदाज तो देखो उनका करम तो देखो उनकी राहमत तो देखो उनकी इनायत तो देखो अरे वो ऐसे गम खार हैं कि ये नवाजश ये इनायतें हमें दो जहां से छुड़ा दिया हमें मुस्तफा तेरा शुक्रिया मुझे जीना मरना सिखा दिया जीने का ढंग सीखना चाहते हो जीने के अंदाज सीखना चाहते हो तो आओ मदीने की गलियों में चलते हैं आओ आका की बारगाह में चलते हैं कि आका ने दीन का इस्लाम का पैगाम कैसे फैलाया क्या तलवार से फैलाया अरे तलवार से नहीं पूछो बिलाल से कि बिलाल ने इस्लाम कबूल कैसे किया बिलाल से पूछा गया है बिलाल फिर क्या हुआ कहा मैंने कहा कि यह चक्की कौन पीसेगा अरे वो जालिम तो मारेगा लेकिन आका ने फरमाया अरे बिलाल घबरा नहीं आज तुझ गुलाम की खातिर मैं मोहम्मद पूरी रात चक्की पीसता रहूंगा फिर क्या अंदाज थे मेरे आका के कहा मैं सो गया वो गुलाम सो गया बिलाल सो गया पूरी रात मेरे आका चक्की पीसते रहे जब फजर का वक्त हुआ मेरे आका ने सारा सामान बिलाल के हवाले किया अब ये एक रात का वाक्य नहीं है कहा दूसरी रात फिर आका तशरीफ लाए दूसरी रात फिर आए मुझे दूध दिया दूध का प्याला दिया कहा बिलाल तू सो जा फिर बिलाल सो गए फिर पूरी रात मेरे आका चक्की पीसते रहे फिर तीसरी रात फिर तशरीफ लाए बिलाल फिर बीमार थे मेरे आका ने कहा बिलाल सो जा कम्बल दिया बिलाल लेट गया दूध का प्याला दिया बिलाल ने दूध पिया बिलाल सो गया जब तीसरी रात मेरे आका ने सारा सामान दिया ना तो बिलाल ने कहा है जाने वाले रुक जा है जाने वाले रुक जा अरे मक्के वाले झूठे हैं झूठ बोलते हैं जो कहते हैं कि मोहम्मद अरबी जादूगर है अरे जिसे इस गुलाम के बुखार का एहसास है वो झूठा नहीं वो यकीन रसूल है वो रसूल है यू इस्लाम फैला यूं इस्लाम का पैगाम फैला तुम कहते हो इस्लाम तलवार से फैला इस्लाम नफरत से फैला नहीं तलवार से नहीं आका के प्यार से फैला आका की मोहब्बत से फैला आका की शफकत से फैला आका की मेहरबानियों से फैला आका के करम से फैला आओ इस मोहब्बत के पैगाम को आम करें आओ इस यकजहती के पैगाम को आम करें आओ इस इतिहाद के पैगाम को आम करें आओ नफरतों को मिटा दें आओ दुश्मनों की को मिटा दें आओ अदावतों को मिटा दें दुनिया को बता दें कि हम उस मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि अलैहि व का कलमा पढ़ने वाले हैं जिनके लबों पर हमेशा मुस्कुराहट थी जो हमेशा मुस्कुराते थे जो हमेशा मदद करते थे हर मांगने वाले को अता करते थे कोई हाली हाथ नहीं जाता था इन्ना आते ना कल कौसर सारी कसरत पाते ये हैं रब है मोती ये हैं कासिम रिस्क उसका है खिलाते ये हैं वो ऐसे करम फरमाने वाले आका हैं और उनकी तालीमत को सीने से लगा लो और आका की तालीमत पर अमल करने का इरादा कर लो और जो अमल करता है फिर आका का करम उस वक्त तक महदूद नहीं सिर्फ उनके लिए नहीं आज आप पर भी इनायतों की बरसात हो सकती है 
आप भी उनका कुर्ब हासिल कर सकते हैं आप भी दीदार कर सकते हैं लेकिन शर्त यह है कि दिल की दुनिया आबाद हो दिल की दुनिया आबाद हो दिल के दरवाजों को पाक करें दिल को गुनाहों से पाक कर ले मदीने वाला आप पर भी कर्म फरमाएगा बगदाद में एक औरत रहती थी बगदाद शरीफ में एक औरत रहती थी अपनी बेटी के साथ अचानक एक आवाज़ आई मुनादी ने निदा की कि आज बगदाद में खलीफा बगदाद के घर में उसके महल में मिलाद की महफिल है खलीफा बगदाद के महल में क्या है मिलाद की महफिल है उसने जब ऐलान सुना अनाउंसमेंट सुनी तो उसने अपनी बेटी को कहा बेटी आओ हम भी चलती हैं आका की मिलाद की महफिल है और खलीफा बगदाद के महल में है हम भी वहाँ जाते हैं और आका की मिलाद में हम भी हाजिरी कशरफ हासिल करती हैं दोनों माँ बेटी चली जाती हैं जब बगदाद के खलीफे के महल में पहुँचती हैं तो देखती हैं कि बाहर एक दरबान खड़ा है दरबान ने कहा तुम कौन हो कहा हमने अनाउंसमेंट सुनी ऐलान सुना हम आ गई हमने सुना है कि बहुत बड़े पैमाने पर आका की मिलाद की महफिल हो रही है हम मिलाद मनाने के लिए आई हैं कहा तुम्हारे पास दावतनामा है इन्विटेशन कार्ड है कहा इन्विटेशन कार्ड तो नहीं है कहा यह महफिल आम लोगों के लिए नहीं है यह अनाउंसमेंट खास लोगों की है यह अनाउंसमेंट उन लोगों के लिए है जो बगदाद के मशहूर लोग हैं जिनका ताल्लुक खलीफा बगदाद के साथ है उनको इन्विटेशन कार्ड दिया गया दावतनामा दिया गया क्या तुम्हारे पास कोई दावतनामा है उस औरत ने कहा मैं गरीब औरत हूं दावतनामा तो नहीं लेकिन सरकार का इश्क तो रखती हूं सरकार की मोहब्बत तो रखती हूं मैं और मेरी बेटी हम दोनों इकट्ठी रहती हैं हम चाहती हैं कि मिलाद की महफिल में आए उन्होंने कहा नहीं तुम मिलाद की महफिल में नहीं आ सकती कहा है मेरी बेटी औ हम घर वापस चले तो बेटी भी रोना शुरू कर दिया बेटी ने भी बेटी कहती है माँ देखो हम गरीबों को आका की मिलाद की महफिल में भी आने की इजाजत नहीं है यह वक्त आ गया है माँ ने कहा बेटी घबराने की जरूरत नहीं घबराने की जरूरत नहीं मेरी बेटी आ अगर आका करम फरमाएंगे तो आका का करम फकत खलीफा बगदाद के महल तक महदूद नहीं है वह ऐसे करीम आका है वह तो हमारे कच्चे मकान में भी करम फरमाएंगे आ मेरी बेटी हम घर चलती हैं और घर में ही महफिल मिलाद का इनका करेंगी कहा है मेरी माँ घर में महफिल मिलाद का इनका कैसे होगा कहा बेटी मुझे आका के मिलाद के मोजात के वाकत याद हैं मैं मिलाद के वाकत याद करके मैं तुझे सुनाती रहूंगी कुछ नाते याद हैं कुछ नाते पढ़ती रहूंगी है मेरी बेटी नए कपड़े तो हमने पहन लिए हैं हालत वजू में हैं आ बेटी घर चलते हैं हम घर में आका की मिलाद की महफिल मनाएंगी पूरी रात माँ आका के मिलाद के मोजात के वाकत सुनाती रही बेटी सुनती रही माँ नाते पढ़ती रही बेटी नाते सुनती रही शहरी का वक्त आया माँ ने कहा मैंने ताज़ा वजू करना है पानी लेके आ बेटी घर से बाहर जाती है दरवाज़ा खोलती है बेटी की चीख निकल जाती है घर के अंदर वापस आ जाती है माँ ने कहा बेटी क्या हुआ किस चीज़ ने तुझे डराया क्यों डरी उसने कहा माँ जरा बाहर तो आ माँ जरा बाहर तो आ बेटी क्या हुआ क्यों डरी कहा माँ बाहर तो आ देख बाहर कौन आया है देख बाहर कौन आया है माँ देख माँ ने कहा बेटी कौन आया होगा हम गरीबों को कोई महफिल मिलाद में जाने नहीं देता हमारे कच्चे मकान में कौन आएगा महफिल मिलाद में कहा माँ बाहर आ तो सही एक मरतबा देख तो सही माँ कमरे से बाहर जाती है माँ की चीख निकल जाती है माँ देखती है कि एक सफेद रिश बुजुर्ग नूरानी चेहरे वाले माँ के दरवाजे की दहलीज को चौखट को बार बार चूम रहे हैं बार बार चौखट को चूम रहे हैं दहलीज को चूम रहे हैं जब चेहरा उठाते हैं तो माँ हैरान हो जाती है पीरे पीरा मीरे मीरा शेख अब्दुल कादिर जिलानी गौ से आजम मीरा दस्तगीर घर के बाहर हैं और चौखट को चूम रहे हैं माँ कहती है शेख अब्दुल कादिर जिलानी गौ से आजम आप हमारे घर में हमारे कच्चे मकान में आप कैसे तशरीफ लाए गौ से आजम ने कहा है नादान औरत तेरे लिए नहीं आया तेरे लिए नहीं आया क्यों आए हो कहा देखती नहीं आका का करम गरीबों के लिए कितना है कोई टूटे हुए दिल से मोहम्मद अरबी को पुकारे तो मोहम्मद अरबी कैसा करम फरमाते हैं तू जानती नहीं आज तेरी महफिल उस बारगाह मुस्तफा में ऐसी मकबूल हुई है कि मैं अब्दुल कादिर जिलानी खुद अपनी आंखों से देख रहा था कि जब तू मिलाद पढ़ रही थी आमना का लाल तेरे घर में आया था मैं उसके कदमों की आहट को दे सुनता रहा उनके कदमों को देखता रहा अरे तेरे घर को नहीं चूम रहा तेरी चौकट को नहीं चूम रहा जिस जगह आका के नालेन लगे हैं उन नालेनों की जगह को अब्दुल कादिर जिलानी चूम रहा है अगर अगर 
अगर आका से प्यार है दिल से है तो आज भी पुकारो आका करम फरमाएंगे आओ एक वजीफा मैं अक्सर दिया करता हूँ आका के दीदार का इस वजीफे को याद कर लो वजीफा एक वाक्य की सूरत में मैं पेश किया करता हूँ इसी पर अपनी गुफ्तु ख़त्म करता हूँ वो वजीफ़ा क्या है एक तो हमारा प्रैक्टिकल मेथड है सरकार सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम से मोहब्बत का हकीकी ताल्लुक उसवार करने का प्रैक्टिकल तरीका दिल को गुनाहों से बचाने का तरीका तजकिया नफ्स के ज़रिए दिल की पाकि हासिल करने का तरीका आका की तलीमत पर अमल कर कर प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ में कामयाब होने का तरीका आका की ज़िंदगी से पॉजिटिव मैसेज हासिल करने का तरीका नेगेटिविटी को ख़त्म करने का तरीका उदासी मायूसी और परेशानी को ख़त्म करने का तरीका डिप्रेशन को ख़त्म करने का तरीका नमाज में कंसनट्रेशन हासिल करने का प्रैक्टिकल तरीका क्या है नमाज से मोहब्बत हो जाए इबादत से मोहब्बत हो जाए और दिल के गुनाहों के साथ दरवाज़ों को बंद करने का प्रैक्टिकल तरीका वो तो हमारे लेक्चर्स आप सुनते रहते हैं और अगर नहीं सुनते तो यहाँ पर हमारे अहिबा मौजूद हैं इनसे आप उसकी तालीमत भी ले सकते हैं लेकिन और हम वज़ाइफ भी देते हैं तीन मरतबा रात दरूज शरीफ इस अंदाज़ में पढ़ना इस तखयर को बांधते हुए इस इमेजिनेशन के साथ कि आप हजूर की बारगाह में मौजूद हैं हजूर मुआजा अकदस में मदीनतलमनवरा में अपने रोज़ा अनवर से बर रास्त आपके दिल को देख रहे हैं और आप हालत वज़ू में हर रोज़ सोने से कबल तीन सौ तेरह मरतबा यूँ दरूज शरीफ पढ़ें कि आपके दिल पर सियाही है गुनाहों का असर है और हजूर अक्रम सल्लाम अपने रोज़ा अनवर से बर रास्त आपके दिल को देख रहे हैं और हजूर के जिसम अथर से एक नूर निकल रहा है हजूर मुस्कुरा रहे हैं और वो नूर आपके दिल में दाखिल हो रहा है उस नूर से आपका दिल ऐसा चमकेगा कि आपको पता चल जाएगा कि आला हज़रत ने क्यों फरमाया था कि चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले मेरा दिल भी चमका दे चमकाने वाले दिलों की दुनिया आबाद करने के प्रैक्टिकल मेथड्स कैसे हैं और फिर हुजूर की बारगाह में जब आप इस ख्याल के साथ कि आपके दिल पर सियाही है और आप मदीनतलमनवरा में मौजूद हैं और हजूर अक्रम सल्लम आपके दिल को देख कर मुस्कुरा रहे हैं और एक नूर आपके दिल में दाखिल हो रहा है जिससे दिल के गुनाह दूर हो रहे हैं और दिल को आका गोया के दिल को पाक कर रहे हैं इस तस्वुर के साथ हर रोज़ तीन सौ तेरह मरतबा अगर आप दुरुचि पढ़ेंगे दिल ऐसा पाक हो जाएगा कि फिर आका का दीदार होगा एक मरतबा नहीं बार बार होगा और फिर आका ऐसा करम फरमाते हैं कि कल भी हजूरी हासिल होती है ये तो बेशुमार हमारे ऐसे प्रैक्टिकल टीचिंग्स हैं कल जो गैर मुस्लिम थे ईसाई थे नॉन मुस्लिम्स थे आज अलहमद ला हजूर अक्रम सल्लाम का कलमा भी पढ़ते हैं और रातों को जब सोते हैं आंखें बंद होती हैं तो मदीने वाले का दीदार होता है फिर ऐसा मकाम मिलता है ऐसा कुर्ब मिलता है लेकिन अगर बरतानिया में रह कर वो लोग वो गैर मुस्लिम जो आज हल्का बगोश इस्लाम हुए इस्लाम कबूल किया अगर उन्हें आका का दीदार हो सकता है मिल सकता है तो आप जो इन बोन मुस्लिम हैं मुसलमानों के घरों में पैदा हुए आपका ताल्लुक सूफिया से है आपका ताल्लुक अल्लाह वालों से है आपको क्यों नहीं नसीब हो सकता लेकिन इसके लिए एक वजीफा बहुत सिंपल सा वजीफा है मुल्क शाम के एक मुरीद ने अपने शेख से कहा शेख मैं आका का दीदार करना चाहता हूँ आका को देखना चाहता हूँ मेरे दिल में तमन्नाएँ हैं मेरे दिल में आरजू है बड़ी शदीद प्यास है दीदार मुस्तफ़ा सल्ह वसम की शेख कोई विरद दीजिए कोई वजीफा दीजिए कि मैं आका का दीदार करूँ तो शेख ने कहा आज रात का खाना मेरे घर में खाना मैं तुझे वजीफा दूंगा वो मुरीद आया शेख के पास आया रात का खाना शेख के पास खाया लेकिन शेख ने खाने में नमक बहुत ज्यादा डाल दिया खाने में सॉल्ट बहुत ज्यादा डाल दिया और ऊपर पानी भी नहीं दिया अब वो शेख के अदब में वो कुछ कह भी नहीं सकता था मुर्शिद का अदब है कि खाने में नमक भी बहुत डाल दिया और फिर पानी भी नहीं दिया लेकिन खाना खा लिया मुर्शिद से गिला भी नहीं किया कहा वो वजीफा देना था आपने दीदार मुस्तफ़ा का मेरी दिल में ख्वाहिश है कि मैं आका सल्ला वसलम का बार बार दीदार करूँ आपने वजीफा नहीं दिया कहा ठीक है फजर के वक्त आना तुझे वजीफा मिल जाएगा लेकिन एक शर्त है अब घर जाओगे फौरन सो जाना लेकिन पानी नहीं पीना बगैर पानी पिए सो जाना अब शेख ने पहले तो खाने में नमक इतना डाल दिया पानी दिया भी नहीं और फिर फरमाया घर जाओगे पानी पीना भी नहीं बगैर पानी पिए <laughs> सो जाना वो घर जाता है सो जाता है सुबह आता है फजर की नमाज शेख की इकतदा में अदा करता है शेख से पूछता है शेख आपने कहा था वजीफा देंगे वजीफा नहीं दिया शेख ने कहा रात घर गया था घर गया था फौरन सो गया था फौरन सो गया था पानी पिया था नहीं पिया था कहा रात ख्वाब में क्या देखा कहा जहाँ आँख उठाई कहीं कुएं नजर आए कहीं दरिया नजर आए कहीं समुंदर नजर आए पानी ही पानी नजर आया तो शेख ने कहा यही तेरे लिए वजीफा है यही तेरे लिए विरद है हरे नादान इंसान तेरे दिल में अगर पानी की सच्ची प्यास थी सच्ची तमन्ना थी सच्ची ख्वाहिश थी जिस चीज की ख्वाहिश होती है वही चीज ख्वाब में आती है तू प्यासा था ना तो अगर पानी तेरी ख्वाब में आकर तेरी प्यास बुझा सकता है अरे आमना के लाल का सच्चा प्यार पैदा कर मदीने वाला दीदार क्यों नहीं कराएगा तू कहता है मुझे प्यास है मैं देखना चाहता हूं आका को लेकिन मैंगलोर की हसीनाओं के चेहरे भी देखे यहां 
यहाँ की औरतों को देखे बॉलीवुड की मूवीज को देखकर अपनी आंखों की प्यास को तू बुझा रहा है फोटोग्राफी तू देख रहा है और फिर कहता है सच्ची प्यास है सच्ची प्यास नहीं है तो झूठ बोल रहा है अगर तमन्ना है अगर आरजू है तो दिल को पाक कर दिल को साफ कर दिल की दुनिया को आबाद कर अपने खाना दिल को गुनाहों से पाक कर ले दुनिया के हुसन से दूर कर ले फिर मदीने वाला आएगा तेरे अंदर प्यास नहीं है झूठ बोलता है प्यास पैदा होगी उस सूरत में जब हसीनाओं के चेहरे तेरी आंखें नहीं देखेंगी जब दिल पाक हो जाएगा आंखें बंद करेगा मदीने वाले का दीदार होगा फिर मुफ्ती आजम हिंद का वो शेर याद आएगा कुछ ऐसा कर दे मेरे किरदार आंखों में हमेशा नक्श रहे रुए यार आंखों में उन्हें न देखा तो किस काम की है ये आंखें के देखने की है सारी बाहर आंखों में अरे फिर दुनिया का हुसन तुझे नहीं भाएगा फिर एक ही आवाज होगी अब मेरी निगाहों में जचता नहीं कोई जैसे मेरे सरकार है वैसा नहीं कोई अल्लाह जल्ला हमारी हाजरी को कबूल फरमाए अल्लाह हजूर का सच्चा प्यार अता फरमाए सच्ची मोहब्बत अदा फरमाए दिल की अथा गहराइय से फिर आज के इस महफिल में तमाम ऑर्गेनाइजर्स को हबीबी अमीर साहब को और दीगर जितने भी अहबाब हैं आपने अहतमाम किया अल्लाह जल्ला इस अहतमाम को कबूल फरमाए अल्लाह इस हाजरी को कबूल फरमाए और हमें इतिहाद अता फरमाए इतफाक अता फरमाए अहल हक अहल सुन्नत को महब्बत प्यार यकजहती इतिहाद यूनिटी अता फरमाए और अल्लाह हमें अकीद अहल सुन्नत व जमात पर तादम आखिर कारबंद रहने की तोफ़ी अता फरमाए अल्लाह हम सब के गुनाहों को माफ़ फरमाए इस हाजरी की बरकत से इस महफिल की बरकत से अल्लाह ताली तमाम की नेक जायज़ हाजात को पाए तकमील तक पहुँचाए और वो लोग जो इस्लाम को दहशत गर्दी से नत्थी कर रहे हैं अल्लाह जल्ला हमें अपना फरीजा अदा करते हुए जो आज हमने तलीमत सीखी सीरत का मुताल करना है सीरत को किस तरह पढ़ना है मोहब्बत का पैगाम कैसे आम करना है किस तरह सब की खिदमत करनी है हमारे किरदार के जरिए ये पैगाम देना चाहिए खिदमत खल का पैगाम मोहब्बत का पैगाम खाजा गरीब नवाज का पैगाम गौ से आजम का पैगाम ये नफरत नहीं फैलाते थे ये वो लोग हैं जो कहते हैं खाजा निज़ामुद्दीन ओलिया इर्शाद फरमाते हैं अगर कांटे बिछाने वालों की राहों में कांटे ही बिछाए जाते रहे तो ये सारी दुनिया कांटों से भर जाएगी अगर कोई शख्स आग का मुकाबला आग के साथ करेगा तो ये दुनिया जल के राख हो जाएगी आग अगर कोई शख्स लगाए तो आग का मुकाबला अमन आश्ती और मोहब्बत और वादारी हम दर्दी और खैर खाई के पानी से करें तो आग बुझ जाएगी आग बुझाना चाहते हो तो पानी के साथ आग बुझाओ कोई नफरत दे तुम प्यार दो कोई अदावत करे तुम मोहब्बत के साथ पेश आओ देखो इन ये नफरतें ख़त्म हो जाएंगी आज हमारी ये जिम्मेदारी है कि अगर इस्लाम की तालीमत को दहशत से नत्थी किया जा रहा है हमारी नौजवान नस्ल को एक्सट्रीमिज़म के तरफ की तरफ ले जाया जा रहा है तो हम कम अज़ कम हजूर अक्रम सल्लाम की सीरत का मुताल करें लेकिन मोहब्बत के साथ मुताल करें खुदा की कसम बड़ी शर्म आती है जब हम किसी मुसलमान से पूछते हैं कि क्या तुझे पता है आका के बेटों का नाम क्या है आका की बेटियां कितनी हैं बेटों का नाम क्या है अशरा मुबशरा सहाबा टेन कंपेनियंस फॉर होम जन्ना वाज गारंटीड बाय रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम हाउ मेनी पीपल नो द नेम्स ऑफ द टेन टेन कंपेनियंस रेज योर हैंड्स अप हाउ मेनी पीपल नो द नेम्स ऑफ टेन कंपेनियंस फॉर होम जन्ना वाज गारंटीड दिस इज जस्ट 2% प्रोबेबली 3% ऑफ पीपल इमेजिन दिस एंड इफ आई आस्क यू नेम द 11 क्रिकेटर्स ऑफ इंडियन क्रिकेट टीम हाउ मेनी पीपल विल रेज द हैंड्स अप almost everyone will know or a football team that you follow or some celebrity that you follow you may know the names of all of these people but do we know the names of the companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam do we know the names of the the children of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's a shame that we do not study the seerah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is necessary for us to study the story of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we should at least know about the basics of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we claim to love the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but why is it that we do not know the biography of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam make a firm intention tonight inshallah from this day forth we will start studying rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we will study the life story of the beloved of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam aur jab aapko huzur ekram sallallahu alaihi wasallam ki seerat jis tarah humne kaha hai the way we have discussed it make notes while studying the seerah imagine i will discuss this incident of the seerah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with him in jannah inshallah 
In Jannah, we will talk to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we will make dua. Oh Allah, bless us with the neighborhood of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Jannah. Allah, may Huzur Ekram sallallahu alaihi wasallam ka prosa da farma. Every day when we will wake up, we will make dua. Oh Allah, make us true lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Every day we will ask our parents. Oh parents, make us make dua for us that Allah blesses us with the true love of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah blesses us with the neighborhood of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Jannah. Ye duaay karein. Hamare dust points hain. We have ten points which is called nisabul ishq. आज उनमें से सिर्फ तीन पर हमने कलाम किया इफ यू हैव लव फॉर समवन इन्फॉर्म देम और रिएक्ट नहीं करना रिएक्शन को खत्म कर दें कभी भी चेन रिएक्शन डेवलप ना हो किसी काम में कारोबार में दीन में दुनिया में चेन रिएक्शन ना हो रिएक्ट नहीं करना जो कि जिस मैंने तू बड़े बाप का भाई तू बड़ा अपना काम करते रहे जो बंदा दुश्मन का मुकाबला चटान का मुकाबला चटान बन के करोगे जख्मी हो जाओगे एक तंग गली से आप गुजर रहे हैं तंग गली से और आप के सामने एक चट्टान आ गई है आपने गुजरना है ना आपने आगे जाना है अपनी मंजिल तक पहुंचना है आप चट्टान बन जाओगे वो मुझसे मुकाबला करेगा मैं भी अपने घर से खाता हूं भाई वो अपने आप को बड़ा समझता मैं भी बड़ा हूं उसको ऐसा मजा चखाऊंगा अब वो देखेगा उसने मेरे खिलाफ बात की उसने मुझ पर जुल्म किया मेरी दुकान के सामने दुकान बना ली मेरे कारोबार को खत्म कर रहा है मेरे खिलाफ बातें कर रहा है अब देखना आप उससे लड़ाई करेंगे क्या होगा चटान का मुकाबला चटान बनकर करोगे खुद भी जख्मी हो जाओगे पता नहीं कितने साल लग जाए उस चटान को हटाने के लिए कामयाब भी हो गए वक्त भी बर्बाद होगा जिस तरह मैंने कहा चालीस साल एक बंदा जेल में रहा चालीस साल वो चंद लम्हों की बात थी ना वो वक्त भी देखा है तारीख की घड़ियों ने वो जो शेर मुझे भूल गया था वो वक्त भी देखा है तारीख की घड़ियों ने लम्हों ने खता की थी सदियों ने सजा पाई लम्हों ने खता की थी सदियों ने सजा पाई लम्हे खता कर अचानक गुस्सा आया सब कुछ बर्बाद कर दिया फिर कत्ल होते हैं फिर जेलों में जाते हैं वो चंद लम्हों के लिए उस उस गुस्से को चेंज कर लें उसको पॉजिटिव एनर्जी बना लें तो फिर क्या होगा जब आप चटान का मुकाबला चटान बनकर करेंगे जख्मी हो जाएंगे और फिर उस चटान को गिरा दिया पीछे एक और बहुत बड़ा रॉक होगा एक बड़ी चटान होगी फिर उससे मुकाबला करोगे फिर एक और चटान होगी तो क्या होगा सारी जिंदगी मुकाबला ही करते रहोगे लेकिन अल्लाह वाले क्या कहते हैं अल्लाह वाले कहते हैं चटान का मुकाबला चटान बन कर ना करो जब कोई चटान बन जाए सामने रुक जा रुकावट बन जाए तो अल्लाह के वली सूफिया का तरीका क्या है वो चटान का मुकाबला चटान बन कर नहीं करते वो पानी बन जाते हैं पानी अपना रास्ता खुद तलाश कर लेता है कभी दाई तरफ कभी बाई तरफ कभी पीछे जाके प्रेशर होना चाहिए मोटिवेशन होनी चाहिए विल पावर होनी चाहिए पानी रास्ते बना लेता है दाई तरफ से बाई तरफ से तो चटान का मुकाबला चटान बन कर नहीं करना पानी बन जाओ कहो कोई दुश्मनी करता है उसे करने दो मेरे आका सल्ला वसलम की तालीम क्या है असब्र वसमा मेरे आका सब्र किया करते थे और माफ कर दिया करते थे अगर जिंदगी में कामयाबी हासिल करना चाहते हो तो कभी एहसास से कमतरी का शिकार ना हो कभी डीमोटिवेट होने की जरूरत नहीं है हमेशा आपकी मोटिवेशन का लेवल बुलंदियों पर होना चाहिए क्योंकि हम अकेले नहीं हैं हमारे आका का कर्म है अहल हिम्मत ने हसूल मुद्दा में जान दी और हम बैठे हुए रोया किए तकदीर को अरे ये हो गया वो हो गया तकदीर में नहीं था नहीं खुद ही को कर बुलंद इतना कि हर तकदीर से पहले खुदा बंदे से खुद पूछे बता तेरी रजा क्या है अपनी अपने अंदर वो विल पावर पैदा करें और वो विल पावर हमें दीन देता है हमें इस्लाम देता है अल्लाह जल्ला हमें पॉजिटिविटी के इन पैगाम को आम करने की तोफ़ी कता फरमाए आप सबकी हम सबकी हाजिरी कबूल फरमाए वो आखिर उदावाना अनिलहमदिल्ला रबीआलमी